into an outer zone again, ready to pull it up to an outer zone again as Rody starts closing the door. Oh, oh that's one way to do it. Welcome to Topo International Motorsport Park. It's the 2023-2024 Repco D1NZ Championship and we couldn't be more excited because Pro Sport are part of the big show now and we're currently in the top 24. We'll get to you in just a moment. Remember, at 2 o'clock on Sky Sport, Fox Sport and KO and also Motorsport.tv, the big show, Repco D1NZ, the pros will be showing as well. But first and foremost, where are we? Where are we? Here's a closer look. Topor International Motorsport Park, the racetrack on the outskirts of the picturesque Lake Topor, New Zealand's largest lake in the centre of the North Island, feeding our longest river, the mighty Waikato. It's a tourist mecca with its proximity to the slopes and much more. But this weekend, we've flipped the switch with Aotearoa's best drifters bringing their exhilarating sideways smoke show to town. This is Topor. This is the Repco D1NZ. And if you are pumped and ready to go, so are we. Time to meet the commentary team. As always, STM, Steve the Māori rejoins us, mate. Uh, welcome back to a brand new season. You've got to be pumped, right? How good is it to be back here? Topo International Motorsport Park. This is a place the drifters love. They are at home here, and I can't wait to be a part of it today. Okay, what are you looking forward to, both in pro sport and the pros? Well, the biggest thing for me is that there is one person in pro sport that was there all season last season. He's not there because he's made the step up to pro. Case Paul and Burry, who's going to play, uh, who's going to be the leader this year? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Throw it out there because he's already qualified P2 already in the pros. Well, how good is it to be part of the Paul and Burry family? We saw Cody do a great job. Some of the best scores we've seen. Case, he got second yesterday, but there could only be one. And of course, that is Taylor <laughs> James. All right, going to get busy, mate. Good to have you back. We'll see you around. Welcome to the new newest member of the team, Tony G. Man, I'm trying to, I'm trying to wear all the gold. You know, you call yourself Tony G. Where's the gold and the dangles, mate? Just tell folks that may or may not know you wherever you come from, pal. Well, mostly speed, uh, heavily speedway background to start with. I've um, been dabbling in a few speedway um, meetings and commentary for the last few seasons, and I've followed D1 since a long time ago, 2005. Pukekohe is probably one of the earliest memories I have of D1. Uh, followed me through to the street round at Otoro in 2005 as well, and here we are. All right, what are you looking forward to this season, both pro and pros? Well, first of all, being part of this commentary team, Stephen and Steve, it's just I'm looking extremely forward. You're it's welcome. going to be it's going to be amazing. Uh, yeah, just being part of that team. But pro Taylor James, he's been second in 2000. He's been third in 2002. He's been third, second again last year. Surely it's time for Taylor James to step up. Wow, throwing it out there. I'm sure the Central Turf boys will be quite happy about that. All right, go get and see Steve and have a good time. Welcome to the team. Let's take a look at what you can look forward to today here on our live stream, which is on our a D1 live stream, also the Repco live stream. Basically, we're in the top 24. We'll run through the 16, the 8, the 3, the 4, and we'll find a winner. And then at 2 o'clock, we're live on Sky Sport in New Zealand, KO and Fox Sport in Australia, and Motorsport.tv. So there is a lot for you to get into. But right now, let's take a look at the track which brings you the brand new smoke show for 24. Topol International Motorsport Park, round one of the Repco D1NZ National Drifting Championship. Let's take a look at the drift section. The drift lap comprises of three inside clipping points. A left-hander to start the lap, another in the middle, with a third right-hand clip before the finish. There are also three outer zones that the judges will ask the drivers to fill with the rear of their cars. Here's a lap from last season with Fangadan Wilhouse and Taylor James. The lap starts with an inside clip entry straight into an outside zone, an aggressive direction switch with the chase driver using the leader as a mobile clipping point. It's another inside clipping point coming off the outer zone as Fanger gets the power down heading for the next outer zone before arcing the Mustang off the corner to grab the final inside clip before crossing the finish line onto the front straight. 
This is a lap of Topor, this is a Rebco D1NZ. So quite simply, here we go, baby. Ripco D1NZ, we're pro sport now. Two o'clock, we're into the pros. So time to bring the smoke show. Let's get it on. Well, let's bring it on. All right, Tony G, welcome to the commentary box. This is the Repco D1NZ. Oh, super excited. I've just said it once. I'll say it again. I'll probably say it lots of times throughout the, Steven, uh, throughout the year, Steve. Super excited to be part of this commentary team for the Repco D1NZ 2024 season. Well, here is our first car out on track. This is the Torque Performance RB30 powered Nissan Silvia Digger Dan. It is Daniel Smith, DK Smith Excavations, a man that is certainly at home here in the D1NZ. I think he's been around since the beginning. Yeah, well, it's a long time ago, isn't it? So, uh, D1's been around for a long time. I've followed it for a long time, and it's absolutely fantastic to see the weather that Topol's put on as well. Well, it always puts, puts it on. I mean, you're certainly at home here, aren't you, Tony G, having worked here for many years? Yeah, spent a bit of time here at Topol International Motorsport Park, formerly TIMP as well, the, the, uh, before the, the overthrow to uh, Tony Quinn when he bought the place. And what a wonderful thing it is, and Tony obviously having a number of different uh, racetracks throughout Aotearoa. Here is our first battle of the day as they start getting ready to cruise around into the drift section. It is Daniel Smith versus Sam Rawson. Rawson, an immaculately pre presented Laurel, and let's see what Digger Dan can do in the torque performance machine. He comes through hitting that outside zone. Again, running it nice and heavily through the centre section. Sam Rawson there getting, oh, he's, he's dropped back a fair bit through the centre part of the section. And Dan really pulling away through to the final corner. And a big gap being formed between these two drivers is Daniel Smith. And that's going to be great for Daniel Smith. He's got an advantage. We know that he just has to hold on to the lap. Come through to finish back onto the front straight here in Topo. That's a lap. Just like that, Dan Smith. Great crowd here uh, enjoying the drifting. You can see uh, them all starting to line up across the pit lane, getting the most, getting the best they can with that beautiful Monga in the background. Ah, Mount Tohara there in the background. What a beautiful backdrop to an amazing looking circuit. I mean, the, we speak about how good the, uh, the sale of Tony Quinn has been. Uh, look at the presentation of the track, the, uh, the mowing lines. Oh, it's all about the mowing lines. Look at that cross mowing. It's beautiful. Of course, we've got amazing uh, support here. We've got Repco, of course. People might go, what? why have you got Repco and Napa? It's all part of the same whanau. So there it is, the beautiful Mount Tohara. What an amazing backdrop. And of course, come April next year, the beautiful backdrop for the V8 supercars. We'll see the best tin top taxi drivers in, uh, <laughs> in Australasia. But of course, there's another thing that's coming up a little bit earlier on, and that will be the historic Grand Prix. Now that's, I think, the we'll say the uh, 18th to 21st, maybe, of January. I know you can go up and find out more information at supersprint.co.nz. And that will see the Castrol, Toyota, um, Oceania, no, CT, Castrol, Toyota, Formula, Regional, Oceania, Championship. I got it right, that's the first time. At least I don't have to say it a lot. So a beautiful well. day to be up in the grandstands. We do hope you are rugged up nice and warm from that southerly that's coming up off the lake. But the sun's certainly out if you're out of the wind. It's a good place to be. Well, down to launch Master Willie. This is round one of the Pro Sport Championship Repco D1NZ. Sam Rawson, it's his turn to play lead. We, well, I would assume that he's in a deficit at the moment. What can he do? Can he pull the rabbit out of the bag? Well, it's a, uh, a shallow transition into the first outer zone. So he gets ready and sets himself up for the centre. Sam Wilson, he's got a good lead over Daniel as he comes down through the centre. He needs to tuck down a bit further and hang on to that well, other great point. angle. Oh, is that a straight line? Tony G is going to come through to finish it big on the handbrake. And now he needs to tuck down into that inner clip on the way down. And Dan, a little bit of a mistake there from him in the back. Well, is this so going to come down, Tony G, as who made the bigger mistake? Yeah, well... Now, we looked at it and we saw quite a decent gap between the two drivers in the first half of their battle. Then we come to the second half. Somewhat of a, a gap of as well, yeah. So we're looking at the top 24 still here, working after the uh, right-hand side of the tree. The winner of this battle will go through to take on second-place qualifier Matty J from Rotorua and the Psycho JZ as our next battle lines up on the grid there. That'll be Daniel Cordwell and Braden Mayer. All right, well, uh, we'll see where it is, and we'll see who is going to take the win between Daniel Smith and Sam Rawson. We do have another battle getting ready to go, and this is one of our very important people coming out on track to have their battle very important in the form of the VIP drift team. 
Well, I've just heard confirmation, maybe. Have we heard? You know what? It doesn't matter. We get up to launch Master Willie. It is Braden Mayer versus Daniel Caldwell, our 10th and our 23rd top qualifiers as they roar around. Welcome the team from VIP Trusses and Frames. This is Daniel Caldwell and a wheel drop, a pass. So, yeah, Daniel there just entered real wide. The, the judges are asking that they do go on the outside line as they enter. And uh, Daniel there just sending it quite far out. He obviously washes wide to the first outer zone as Braden Mayer comes around to finish off the lap regardless. Well, it kind of doesn't matter in that situation. Obviously, we've had a wheel drop that pushed the car out wide. Chase Driver just took the opportunity to do as, be as safe as he could. Just for the people that are watching, Daniel Smith took the win in the last battle between himself and Sam Rawson. But, yeah, issues, of course, for Daniel, uh, for Daniel Caldwell. Yeah, so a big uh, advantage to Braden Mayer as they go through the second half of that battle. Uh, like I say, those of you who are normally in the D1, you're watching that initiation over the top of the hill, we call it. It is quite a hill. There's a bit of a look up to the top of this, uh, the start of this drift section here at Topo. Um, now, I wonder if uh, Braden, you know, thinking, well, uh, if he went and finished off to get a bit more practice in, you know, get those tyres nice and warm, it's a long way around. And needs all the grip he can get as he leads out in the second half of this battle. So a couple of beautiful looking cars. Yeah, Braden. I do like work equips. Look at them. Not beautiful. Bad. Stunning looking cars. The best time of the year is the first round of the year. After that, some of them don't get... <laughs> the but best the cars look, at least. Yeah, they're absolutely the best they stay. And then come Bay Park, they just almost blow them to bits, half of them. <laughs> they sure do. Bay Park, end of the season next year, 24. Now, it must be around April time, I'm assuming, as well. As we get ready to go to the second half of this battle, Welcome along to everyone tuning in from the South Island. These are your drivers out of Drift South. Drift South, an amazing series. We certainly uh, like to throw some love to our southern brothers and sisters. Absolutely, Alex Perlier. I'm sure you're on the live stream watching this. Looking forward to seeing you a bit later in the season. Well, Daniel Caldwell, it's his time to play Chase. How can he go? A nice start by Braden Mayer. He comes through and sets himself up perfectly as he gets ready to go inside. So looking to find that outer clip on the way down past the Dale ITM sign. And he's a little bit shallow on the outer clip on the way out of the middle set part of the section. And we'll see how he sets himself up to finish this lap here. A nice smooth arc as we can see DC trying to do everything he can to claw back some points. My guess is may not be enough. Yeah, somewhat conservative and potentially from Daniel Caudwell in the background as well. Uh, was a little bit shallow on Braden on the entry as well from where the judges are wanting him to be as they come over the top of the hill. There was a white line there yesterday. I suggest that come the pros this afternoon we'll see that white line painted. You may be able to see it a bit easier on the screen. Well, I know later on in the day, possibly a little bit sooner than that, we're going to see the incredible team from Inspire You, which is George and his team. George Moody, he is arguably New Zealand's number one FPV pilot. He really is because he's the only one that's constantly on TV. Well, we've seen one VIP, a VIP car. It's time for the next one. It's one of my favourite drifters in the D1NZ, in the Drift Academy, uh, Rocket Bunny S14. It's Jason Wu. And in the VIP Structural Steel, the former Fanger Dan V. E. Holden Commodore. It is Sam Edinburgh. So yeah, another one of the South Islanders getting amongst the action here. Great to see them, like you say, Steve, up here. And Jason Wu doing a pretty good lead run at the moment as he comes down the bottom of the hill there. Well, looking at these cars here, I almost thought they were in black and white, realising there's a fair bit of colour around. They've gone for that stealth look. Drift Academy up front with Jason Wu. A nice solid run by him, and he has just constantly improved and constantly impressed. It's like wheel drop the finish. Sam, see what he can do. Again, the uh, Southerners getting in behind their drivers. Take a look at that battle tree, Steve. The uh, winner of this battle between Jason and Samuel go through to take on Zach Zayden, qualifying in third position. Good qualifying spot for Zach. Sam did a, gr uh, sorry, Zach did a great job yesterday. We saw some amazing scores. I know that, like Matthew Brown, for example, qualified first. That is the highest score, individual score, that I've ever seen in the D1NZ. He got a 98, but of course, this year, we have every judge, our three judges, they score out of 100. What they do is they add the scores together, they divide them by three, and that gives an average. So although Matthew Brown got a 98 by one judge, I think it sat down in, what was it, a 90, 90, we'll say a 97. So speaking of the judges, Andrew Redwood, Joel Counter, and 
Jarris, JT Farido, the three judges this weekend here at Topol International Motorsport Park. Obviously, Redwood Encounter, they've been around for a few, fair few seasons now, haven't they? Good to see JT up in the judges' box as well. He's a, yeah, certainly very qualified. Yeah, JT, I think he was first or second. I always get it wrong. I got it right last year because I had to. And then I just immediately forgot Tony G. <laughs> So this is Jason Wu, he's on the left hand side of our view with Launchmaster Willie in behind. Sam Edinburgh out of the VIP Drift Camp goes down to Launchmaster Willie, three, two and one, off you go. As they go side by side into their first turn of this drift section here, Topor International Motorsport Park, three wheeling already. It's a good looking start. Check out that angle, Tony G, as they come through. Yeah, so a good lead there in the VIP Steel Structures car. Jason Wudo closing the gap up as they come down to the final part of the section. As they come through to finish, a big drag on the handbrake by the chase driver. Big arc by Sam Edinburgh and they will come through to finish even throwing flames out that left hand bank. Well it's action of plenty on track today Tony. Yeah still making our way through the top 24 of the pro sport battles at the moment still one more to go on the right hand side of the tree that'll see Kiske Nagashima and Ben van der Linden come through. Yeah, we've got to acknowledge Ben Fandel, and we'll do it when they line up, actually, because there's so much to say about that incredible driver. Um, all right, here they are up on screen, and hang on. Oh, no, no. Okay, so we've got the Talk Performance Developments S14. This is Ben Fandel, and then we've got on the outside of him, in the 86 Fighters, the little AE86. It is Kesuke Nagashima. Nagashima. He is certainly one of my um, drives, one of my favourite cars in the D1NZ. Ben Fandel, and now things to know about Ben. This man here, he's constantly rolling. Gentleman here is actually in a wheelchair. He can walk, he's got feet that just don't want to have, don't really want to work for him all the time. He is behind Kohatu Park in Nelson, and he is behind round two of the D1NZ. He wants to bring them up, he wants to bring drifting to the top of the south, and he's done it by building a track. Yeah, looking forward to making the trip down to Nelson, actually, and checking out what Ben's done down there. And uh, it's going to be great to, to have something brand new that the drivers, none of them, no one's going to have an advantage. No one's going to have more practice than anyone else. Or maybe Ben. And, uh, well, I think he's certainly done some laps. <laughs> but I tell you, one person that might do quite well with a slightly more nimble car, maybe the person that's on the outside of him, which is Kesuke Nagashima. Can you get any more of a drift name than Kesuke Nagashima? Like, that just sounds to me like I hear, I think Drift Japan, you know, the origin of drifting and where it started and all that. But Kesuke Nagashima, that's just the coolest name in drifting in New Zealand. Well, Kesuke is going to lead them out. Ben Fundalinda is in behind. He said it's okay to call me Fandalind and Steve, so I will try and do that as well. 86 fighters on the door of Keskate Nagashima. A slight gap to start. Let's see if he can close it up. He being Ben. Ben coming through in that beautiful S14 slides it in. So Can't Keske, close the gap. Yeah, look at the big gap that the little SR20s uh, gapped right away from him. And uh, yeah, almost somewhat of an uh, inactive chase looking like for Ben. I don't know how far that needs to be. Well, I guess. Uh, Thankfully, we're not judges, but I'll judge the judges if they get it wrong. Here's Nakashima comes through to finish the lap as Ben van der Linden comes through as well. So, of course, that's the first half of the battle. We'll come through to the second half afterwards. We've got pro sport now. We've got pro coming up. We've seen some pretty crazy laps over the last couple of days. Yeah, well... Uh, the, the pros, once they get out there, you'll certainly know about it, won't we? But, um, yeah, some big scores in the pro sport. Uh, it's all about... Oh, there he goes. VIP, frames and trust on the side. It's Sam Edinburgh. There he goes. The South Island will have their hands waving in the air right now. They'll be watching wherever they are, hopefully with big screens and projectors. Or It's the South Island. They've probably got big LED screens everywhere. So a beautiful looking car. That obviously the ex car of Fanger, Dan Woolhouse, that was campaigned by Kurt Blackie at the Mount Smart round. And looking really good on those VIP steel structure colours. Well, they didn't just take Fanger Dan's uh, car, did they? They needed to tow something, tow it home and something. Well, yeah, it very looks very familiar, that big rig out there in the pits. I'm sure we'll get a glance across to that at some stage throughout the day. Probably more familiar for the uh, the Taylor James factor, of course. That was Maddie James's baby. 
Matty being the, uh, the truck driver of Central Drift. We go back down to Willie though, it is 3-2-1, Launchmaster sends them out. Let's see what Ben Fundelinden can do as he gets ready for his second half of his battle. It was, well, as you mentioned, more like an inactive chase. We'll see what he can do this time. So the torque performance gets thrown around the outside there. Good wide starting line there for Ben and the S14. Keske though, they're certainly closer than Ben was. A lot of use of the handbrake as they set, settle the cars down. You can see that massive squat for the S14. Keske though, you can, the car is fast. People do not give that car credit for just how quick it is. He's actually looking like he wants to make the outside pass in him. Mate, this is not Speedway. You can do that somewhere else. Yes, yeah, so Fendelin, he's just gone a bit tight as he comes into that final corner there, runs a wheel over the ripple strip, and it kind of made it real hard for Keske. He probably would have had to go across the grass to chase that as he went around the final turn. So, yeah, I'm sure whether that's a, um, yeah, a very unchaseable lead run almost from Ben, so uh, a bit of a hard, hard battle for Ben to get through there. Well, they make their way back down the front straight, we'll turn them around. And of course, there's a good view of those transporters there, Steve. A, a great yeah. look pits in it. Who have we got in the centre there? There's Michael Thorley's truck. Behind, behind him, the big black uh, JDM machines. Then we go to Team DSR, but here comes these two drivers here. We will find out who takes the victory. This is a pro sport. Round number one. Which way will it be? Is it going to be the one on the left? Is it going to be on the right? There's our thumbs up, thumbs down man. He's so freaking handsome. It is Stephen MacGyver. It is Kesuke Nagashima. Thumbs up. So good win for the 86 fighters team, Kesuke Nagashima in the SR2086. Um, who is this guy? What is that guy doing there? You're in the wrong championship, I don't, don't know which one it is, we've got to see the front of the well, car, of course, that's the pull of Burries there. I'm going to let you in a little secret, I, I've checked out everything over those cars, Steve, and I'm looking at the wing mirrors, so I can tell you that one, I'm I pretty sure those and I thought they were different. They are different. Well, Just, this one's here, that one there looks like he's creeping out on track, so I'm going <laughs> to say that that is Cody Pullenbury, this one here is a mechanical test lap. This is our first glimpse of the pros, core civil on the door of Cody Pullenbury's Creepin' S15, 2JZ under the bonnet as he comes through and sets himself up for a lap. Yeah, so big smoke show there from the pros. You can certainly see the difference between the pro sport and the pros as they come down through the centre part of the section. The Creepin' S15 with that 850 horsepower under the bonnet, 2JZ powered. One of your favourite engines, Steve? Oh, it's a beautiful engine as the 2JZ. I'm definitely a favourite of that one there. I think people online are going to be spewing to find out that it's not RV versus 2J this season, it's 2J versus your favourite one. Were those? Was round and round, not up and down? Well, we're going to see Adam Davies a bit later on, and I can't wait to hear the side of that car. I, I messed myself up a little bit. I said that Jaren's car, which we'll certainly hear a bit later, is probably one of the best sounding drift cars I've ever heard. I, I definitely lied. It's probably my second. Oh, um, I mean, Jaren's is a good best sounding car in the history of motorsport. All right, well, look, this is round one of the D1NZ brought to us by the team from Repco. We'll be back shortly. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Ripco D1NZ National Drifting Championship. This is round one of the Pro Sport Championship. Round one of the Pro Topor International Motorsport Park. Tony G. Yeah, what a beautiful day it is. Look, looking back towards Broadlands or Repro. The uh, direction heading back north, northeast, Tarotarua there as the next battles are starting to line up. So of course we've had, uh, this was the top 24, I think we're getting ready now for the top 8. Have you having anything changing on your screen? No. No, nothing updating as such. Um, probably going kind to of get our first look at the first place qualifier, Matthew Brown, very soon. So Matthew Brown, of course, will go up against the winner of the battle between Matt Kitto and Curtis Lilly. Curtis Lilly getting the pass on that. So he is going to go up against our top qualifier, Matty Brown. And further down, we've got James Jeffries that got a free buy through. There it is, the car of Matthew Brown. Look at that beautifully presented, relatively fin new finished build by Russell Bear out of RPM yeah. Fabrication. 
And, so uh, I didn't think that car had anything on it. It's just got ghost sign writing. I guess when it's your own company, it's like, I want a cool looking car that looks show, but I need to go and look after myself as the sponsor as well. So although you can't see it, I can assure you it's got a bit of RPM on the side. Yeah, and I mean, the, uh, the camera certainly doesn't do that paint job justice. So the light there, you can see it this time around. It looks absolutely oh, that is beautiful up close. If you do get a chance and you are here on site, make sure you head down the pits. If you're nearby, maybe sure, you should definitely need to pop down here and check out the Repco D1NZ National Drifting Championship. We are at Topol International Motorsport Park for the first time in the 2023-24 season. And what a season it's going to be. Dean Young there pulling up onto the dummy grid as well. He's on the left-hand side of the tree, and he'll head on straight out. He'll now, take on Justin Patterson. Well, when you look at Dean Young's car, one of the things that I noticed earlier on, I was going through the pit area, he's been getting a lot of tyres changed. Have you seen he's been changing his tyres? Yeah, I have actually. It's good to see her down, down there. She's Is getting Young her hands dirty and, yeah. Don't worry about broken nails down there. <laughs> Certainly not. She came up, she said, Steve, guess what? I've changed all these tyres. And while she was there, I'm pretty sure she'd changed at least a dozen of Taylor James's just sharing the same pit box. My no. story, don't get in the way of the truth, eh? There it is. That's a car you talked about. You can see a little bit of rough RPM on the side. This thing here, if you get a chance ever to come down to a, a drift track somewhere, Russell Veer has built himself a show car that's very good at going sideways. And uh, yeah, got the, the beauty of seeing it for the first time out at Mad Mike Summer Bash. It was a brand new build, and Russell was throwing that thing around, getting so close to the concrete that it wasn't even funny. And I, I thought to myself, he's treating it like an old missile. Summer and Bash, that, obviously, that was a great, uh, a great event put on by by Mike with it, Mad Mike and Tony. They do a great job up there at Hampton Downs. Oh, that's a wheel drop, that's a fine. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I had the pleasure of uh, weaseling my way into the uh, VIP tent, the Red Bull tent there, and uh, got the, yeah. Well, go you, mate. I mean, I, I, I just can't get a freaking thing. Actually, I did. I, I bumped in because I've been working up in Auckland the last couple of months. So, I, of course, I come from Tauranga. I've been up there, and every time I go to Auckland, I head up to Hampton Downs, grab myself a coffee over there, and always stare in the uh, <laughs> in the windows of Mikey's shop. Um, great to see Link with it as well. He's been uh, doing a bit of MSC challenge. Yeah, hasn't had um, probably the best results yet, but hey, he is super young, and uh, I mean, the future of oh, absolutely. drifting. Absolutely. I mean, uh, the last well, time I spoke to Mike, but about him and Link, he was actually almost out selling him in merch, and Mike was like, geez, the bugger's going to be more famous than me, and I believe him. <laughs> oh, Link's great. Uh, just watching him grow, and grow with the sport. Um, and and the entire family. I saw their uh, I saw their little girl decided she got that was Jet. She got to choose what sort of vehicle Mikey took it. Like Dad took her to school the other day or picked her up from school. She said, Dad, I'll have the RX2. <laughs> How cool is that? First battle on the left-hand side of the tread is Matthew Brown in the RPM 180 and Curtis Lilly in the S14. Well, this is a top qualifier and big angle. Almost ran that chase car out. Don't ding the door. And again, backing it in. Yeah, that is not the way to do it. Top qualifier. And that is going to see essentially a zero score. Curtis Lilly, a massive advantage. Now, I'm not sure Russell Veer wants to see when this car comes around because it looks like there might be a big... Oh, oh war. Big Dean Young's dent. probably looking at the distance saying, I can do that. I did it at Manfield. So contact as well, but yeah, massive angle on entry from Matthew Brown. It just put him all out of shape for the rest of the run. As they're driving down there, I was actually looking like Russell surely has to be on the wall there, so I couldn't quite see it. He's probably got his hands in his, uh, his head in his hands right now going, gosh, what are you up to, boy? Matthew Brown, he's going to have some work to do, but it's the best place to do it. If you want to force it to mistake, you're going to do it from the chase position, and that's where he's going to move into now. And I guess the, the side of that car scratched now, and he's not going to have to worry too much about the uh, panels. He's going to replace the door regardless. Man, how the way to talk up a beautiful car, and then just see it getting taken undone. Again, what a beautiful sight here. I'm so old that I look at the grass and just wish I could get a real mower. As we welcome to the broadcast, the team from Inspire You. This is George Moody, and he is arguably New Zealand's number one FPV drone operator. He is the man that is behind the D1NZ, and it's great having him a part of it. As we come through, and we'll go past these Repco signs as we get ready for the second half of the battle. Big uh, welcome to the team from Repco Branch 14. I'm pretty sure that's Topol. Who else am I doing? I've got to do 12, 97, that's the mount, that's the Pookie, 73, and branch 12. 
So, and being a Rotorua boy, I have to say good day to Branch 89, Branch 10, Rotorua East, Rotorua West. Don't forget, Branch 3 in Hamilton, we haven't forgotten about you. Why would you employ commentators that have worked at Repco? Just so we can show Repco the love. And a big shout out to everyone that's episode of 4881BL. <laughs> there it is again. Okay, so a slight change that we've had in, in the D1NZ this season. We have a thing, could hop it. No more five minutes. But because of a collision on track, it is time to call in the five minute bell. So, yeah, of course. How, we... Look, let's get on there, George. How bad is that? Yeah, that looks like a um, little buff out. Oh, so if he has a bit of uh... card, you just punch the side of that. That thing's going to look immaculate. Oh, no, there's a tear in, um, in the fiberglass guard as well. Nah, that was, uh, we'll, we'll lie to everyone and say that that was hand beaten steel. So battle number two on the left-hand side of the tree, scrubbing up at the moment, Daniel Edwards and the Horizon Tires, 180. Come up against, well, it was formerly the rookie. Still the rookie, James yeah, Jeffries. still the rookie. JD Roofing, the RB34 Billet, blocked S15. And it's uh, only 950 horsepower for the rookie, James Jeffries. And special mention as well, Drew's Automotive on the side of that one, naming rights this year for James. And we've got Launchmaster Willie, who's going to get ready to give them full set. That's uh, Daniel Edwards. He's in the 180SX with the real motor. Sorry, with the 2JZ, that is the 180SX. So he's only produced 650? so... 650? Yeah, just 300 horsepower difference. <laughs> well, he... They will head out on track now around the outside of the Crones. So it is Daniel Edwards on the right-hand side for us as he gets ready to send it. So he comes through, running that outside zone. Again, through his zone, it should be an inside clip through here as we can see the rookie start closing the gap. They get ready for the switch, and oh, the rookie really running himself out of room as they get up to the top. So the proximity as far as the chase goes for James Jeffries, he's really got that wrong through the center part of the section. He's taken it really shallow into the final corner, trying to close up that proximity. Well, he can't close up the proximity now. Threw it away at the start of the lap. Got some work to do as they get ready to return favour. They'll make their way back around. I wonder what happened there. He was doing a great job. Yeah, well, he spoke about the horsepower difference. And uh, James Jeffries, yeah, he just, um, well, from the very get-go, looked like he got himself out of shape. And, and what happens here at the Topol International Motorsport Park drift section is that if you don't initiate properly, you don't get that first sort of corner ride. It almost throws out the entire run out the window for you. You have to do a lot to get the car back on track and in the right place of where it needs to be. Well, here we are, Toport International oh, Motorsport Park. Another great look at that mowing strips. <laughs> it's not about the mowing strips <laughs> for anyone else but me. <laughs> they cross mow it too. Who uh, drove on that grass over there? Such a beautiful day in Topol, looking back towards the city centre there. A great shop. Yeah, so if we carried on with the drone a little bit further out, we would get across the uh, beautiful Lake Topol, the biggest lake in Aotearoa. Of course, the size of that area, around the same size as Singapore. Ah. Except there's not really anyone that lives on that lake in comparison to the roughly 50 million people that live in Singapore. So a quick shout out to those tuned in on the D1NZ Facebook page. I'm sure we're live across the Repco New Zealand Facebook pages as well. Welcome along. Now yeah, keeping a little eye on the comments when we can. See if we've got anyone from overseas, not just New Zealand watching. Let us know. Shout out to Cam Banks. I know he's probably out there watching in the... I know there was a few people watching from in America. We'll Mr. see Rod how old. Mr. Thought. Rudnick was watching with the team yesterday. I wonder if they're back again. Hope you are. If you are, hope you're enjoying yourself. This is round one of the Pro Sport Championship, part of the Repco D1NZ. As again, we get ready to go. And the rookie, he just, well, that's just a clock cleaner. It looked like he was going to wash out a bit wider as he comes through the centre section of this lap. Yeah, so he held the grip together and hung on. And he's actually put a little bit of a gap between him and Daniel Edwards. But Daniel Edwards can be relatively conservative, knowing, I'm sure a spotter let him know, that he was going to go on to have a little bit of an advantage after the first one and massive smoke Lord James, he couldn't get down to the inside clip as well on the final turn, he kept it really wide, so yeah, uneducated guessing, the judges are probably going to sway towards Daniel Edwards looking at that, how it played out, and James Jeffries, yeah, just once again, oh, it's almost about the initiation, he washed himself wide and then the rest was history almost. Rising wow. tires on the side of that Daniel Edwards car looking great for the season. 
I saw that on the ground. Well, I'd say there's probably water sprays, so they'll uh, finish their run, flick the water sprays onto the radiator, cool them down. Well, that might have been the end of Kurt Blackie from yesterday. We'll talk through that as well as we get ready for Pro later on. But yeah, big engine malfunction for poor, poor old Kurt Blackie. I think I saw the vehicle heading in earlier okay. this morning. James Jeffries on the right, Daniel Edwards on the left. Who's going to take the win to go through and take on? All right, we're going to go to the lollipop man down there. He's waiting to hear. Is it going to be the man on the left, which is Daniel Edwards? Is it going to be the person on the right, Mr. Lucifer, which is James Jeffries? He's like, who is it? Tell me who it is. Still the deliberating judges, on the though, judges. Such an attractive young man. Let's just make it up more. I so like cool. using the word deliberating. Go on, Steve. Deliberation that's going on up there, upstairs in the judges' box. Of course, touching on them again. Andrew Redwood, Joel Counter, and Jairus JT Farido. Oh, Mr. McGuire has said, I've had enough. Steve is just going to go, like, how are you going, mate? What's been happening, boys? So we don't know who the driver of this, the winner of this battle is going to go through and get just yet either. We've got Matthew Brown, Curtis Lilly. All right, who's it going to be? What did he say? It's going to Daniel Edwards. He goes through into the next round. Stock Street on the windscreen. Thumbs up for Daniel Edwards. This looks like a nice watch too. Well, this is the second half of the battle between the broken door and Curtis Lilly, Curtis Lilly versus Matthew Brown. Hey look, looks like they've got everything back again as we slide past the Repco sign here, Topol International Motorsport Park, round one of the Repco D1NZ. It is a high of 23 degrees today, a low of 12. Wind speed, not too bad, but it hasn't been amazing over the, the starting couple of days. I know I was out here trying to help the team. Yeah, I'm thinking 13 kilometres an hour. It certainly felt a bit more than that, but I'm not very good on the wind radar either. Well, it felt about 70 on uh, on Tuesday when I arrived, <laughs> so... All right, so Matthew Brown, Curtis Lilly, second half of the battle. All right, let's go down to the hands of the incredible man that is Launch Master Willie. He's in charge of so many amazing things, such as launching cars, and over the summer he's going to be driving our broadcast truck around Aotearoa. Oh, look at that. Launch Master Willies. He's, he's become a sort of a piece of furniture as part of the crew of D1, isn't he? Yeah, he's uh, the man that roars in on his Indian motorcycle. It's certainly loud. It's definitely, he's not afraid to sing some sounds with the Indian. But let's go back to the action out here on track today. This is Curtis Lilly. He's in the Drift Direct Nissan S14. And doing a good job out in front, big angle, nice. There's an aggressive switch there in the background from Matthew Brown. He's gonna have to force a mistake. I don't think he's gonna be able to get it done as they go into the last corner. Maybe don't, oh, look again, washes out again. I wonder if there was a, maybe a mechanical or something. Because that, I mean, you can't, you can't go from the top qualifying like so far up to. Yeah, well, I mean, the track changes as well from day to day, I'm sure. Not as much as a speedway surface, but the tarmac there or a different setup on the car, something's happened or something's come loose over time. There's obviously a bit of practice this morning. Something's loosened up, maybe they made some changes and they just didn't work out for Matthew Brown. All sorts of different uh, factors that to, to consider. Obviously, the resurfacing of certain sections of this track, that's going to be a play a factor in some of these things here. I guess for some of them it might be like skating on tiles and talking about tiles, it's SF, SF tiles on the side of the car. That is Mr. Young, but look, let's find ourselves a result. Curtis Lilly versus Matthew Brown. Curtis Lilly, our top our number 16 qualifier. Matthew Brown, number one. Wow, and there he goes. He's happy. Curtis Lilly goes through. Wow, so upsets early in the Pro Sport Championship. Top 16, Matthew Brownie, top qualifies. Thank you, Boomer, and thank you to my lovely fiance for letting me do all the hours in the shed. Thank you to the crew, everybody that backs Friends Motorsport. That's for you guys. I appreciate everybody that backs us up. Oh, that's a beautiful thing. Well done, Curtis Lilly in the 273G. Tony G.
How happy was he? Yeah, stoked. I mean, look at that. Quick shout out to his uh, partner, of course. Um, these guys not being able to go out there and doing that without the support of everyone around them, including their family and partners. Well, it's MTF Finance Cambridge going up against the SF Tiling. That is Dean Young versus Justin Patterson. It's uh, Dean Young on the other side. There it is, Justin Patterson on the right. Black car versus black car. All right, this is Dean Young over here. He's got a 1.5 JZ engine. That's a beautiful S13. Around 615 horsepower, but it's a certainly a beast. He's quite easily tamed. So there we go, Launchmaster Willie sends them off around. It'll be Dean Young leading out Justin Patterson. Well, they'll come around the turn here. What turn number is that in total? In the, in oh, it's the turn number five. Okay, is this Traditionally, four? this is oh, four. Sure. Okay, there we go. It's hard because we go backwards when it comes to drifting, but we're certainly not afraid to go forward at the same time. And if it's forward, it's always sideways with good line and good angle. Justin Patterson really not piecing together the perfect lap right now. He's going to get some work to do. Yeah, running up over the ripple strips, trying to close the uh, the gap up on that. Oh, and he washes real wide as well into the final corner. He's just trying to match the pace of Dean Young. Puts on a great smoke show out at front, so a really good lead run from Dean Young to start there. Justin Patterson, he's going to have some work to do on the second half of this battle. I do love the story about how Justin Patterson got into drifting. Him and, of course, uh, his, his worker. And I say worker, <laughs> I know he's so proud of uh, Rody Knowles. They were um, having a couple of quiet lemonades or whatever it was one night, and Rody said to him, hey, guess what? You'll go and drift in. So I think he'd gone into his foot here to ride with, was it Ra Hayden? Yeah, someone, one of the boys up at track three here, the, the, the club circuit at Topol International Motorsport Park. And not only did Justin just go and buy a drift car, he didn't buy any drift car. He went and bought one of the best drift cars in the country. Oh. I just think it's brilliant. A brilliant story. He said that, um, he finally, he said the time when he realised that maybe he was not bad at drifting was when he went and linked track three which actually isn't the easiest thing to just link. And then somebody said, oh, well, if you can link track three, you can you can drift. And then right, he said, I've entered us into the D1NZ. <laughs> I mean, not only have I watched plenty of drifting, I have had a little go out of it, albeit very poorly. Uh, driven drive track two and track three and, and, and a couple of different cars. And I will say that even from a very, very amateur point of view, uh, trying to drive it, club, the club circuit track three is much harder than track two, I reckon. Whose car did you go with? Sheik's. Uh, it was Guy Maxwell's and Sheik's oh. 1UZ as well. Yeah, so the 1UZ was the first one I gave it a go on. Anyway, second half of the battle. Steve, lead us out. Well, it's the SF Tiling. It is Dean Young. He's on the inside, and he is going to be roaring away. It's the MTF Finance Cambridge S13. This is 13 versus S13. They look a little bit different. It all comes down to the body kits. And it is Patterson who leads the way out of Rotorua, your home. Yeah, Justin Patterson there. Big angle as he's coming through. Dean Young, he can be relatively conservative on the on the chase this time, but no, he's oh, not going to be. Oh, no conservation there. and It was almost contact. So this could throw a little bit of a spanner there. It might be our very first favourite part of the day for you. One more time, maybe. There's nothing good Although, about it one more time. Did Justin keep a little bit more points because he didn't didn't stop drifting while he was chasing, even though it was a bit far back? Oh, actually, no, he did run over the ripple strips. I don't get the beauty of replays for the pro sport. Well, they'll head back in. They'll head down to... So, messy chases from both these drivers. Dean won't be happy with himself there. Yeah, would have, I mean, a spotter would have told him he had the advantage going into that. Well, they head down their pits here at Toport International Motorsport Park. It is Dean Young on the left, Justin Patterson on the right-hand side, and the young man in the middle is Stephen McIver. Stephen waiting to hear as we get our next cars scrubbing. Dean Young's on the left. We've got Jason, Justin Patterson on the right. Who will it be? Justin Patterson, congratulations to Justin. He's going through. Yeah, thumbs up as we get ready. We've seen one MTF Cambridge, a finance Cambridge car. Here is the other. It's Rody Knowles versus Adam Whitehead. Adam Whitehead in the plan B, S14. It's RB versus, what's Brody got? Is he yeah, it's RB as well. Sorry about that. 
So the plan B S14 taking us down through Rody, trying to keep the proximity on the door as they into the centre part of the section. They come through those Dale ITM section. It's an inside clip to an outer zone again, ready to pull it up to an outer zone again as Rody starts closing the door. Oh, oh that's one way to do it. Oh, Rody versus Adam Whitehead, and I tell you what didn't win a pair of Sylvias. So that's somewhat of something we normally see in the speedway, speaking about speedway a little bit earlier. It um, would have been a good tap and take to the wall, but oh, hopefully Rody's Adam Whitehead... taking it off, Rody. What's he going to do? You can see Adam Whitehead... He's like, I'm just going to carry on. Is Adam Whitehead's like, what happened there? Can we see any damage on the car? The wheels are still turning. Look at, look at that. So hopefully all things going well. That's just cosmetic damage to the plan B. He's got his hand out the window, he's like, yeah, look, it's, it's all good. Well, uh, he's not actually he's allowed to go in there. He's probably just getting permission to head in the wrong, or WD as they formally call it in race circuits. So. All right, so what's going to happen now? They're figuring out, and uh, who's going to get in trouble is Rody's like, well, I'm just going to go back. So look, this is the pits, it looks quiet at the moment, I can tell you it's going to be busy when it starts to liven up with our pros later on in the day, of course, if you are wanting to tune in, you can tune in via the team at Sky Sport, we're heading out to Fox Sport as well in Australia, and this is the rest of the pro sport cars, first time we've seen Aaron Habib as well, Here's Gay we saw a little bit earlier on. Yeah, so the right hand side of the tree. This time round, we've got Matty J against Daniel Smith. Ryan Parry will go up against Braden Mayer. Zach Zayden and Sam Edinburgh will go head to head along with Aaron Habib and Keske Nagashima. Looking forward to that battle, actually. A couple of beautifully presented cars. And we've got Fanga Dan out there. He's a bit, uh, yeah, must be mechanical after the steering issues he had. And that's evident in the qualifying that he did, um, yeah, down in sort of 11th or 10th place from memory last night. Did Fanga Dan. Well, this is a four-time New Zealand Drift King. This is the king of kings. When it comes to D1NZ, he was here at the start. He's still here now. If you want to see what a champion looks like, he's on your screen now in the Ford Mustang RTR Spec 5D. 550 horsepower. I'll tell you what. You know what, for one conversation, I can give you 100 more horsepower and tell you that's 650. <laughs> Castro on the side, always been supporting our DK, our Drift King. Fanger Dan, look at this car. So those cones seem to be moved in as well from yesterday from qualifying. There was uh, talk of marbles being all over the track and drivers briefing early this evening, uh, this morning. Well, if you want to talk yeah. about talk, it's all out there under the bonnet of this RTR Mustang. It's running the Coyote V8 as they head down. Look at Fanger Dan. This is the difference between the 235 and the 265. The semi slick and the slick man behind the wheel is Fanger Dan. Oh, what some great shots of that Mustang as it comes around. And of course, not the only thing that Fanga Dan's doing sideways this weekend. Steve, anything else going on for him? Absolutely. So he's been at TWS Paradise Valley Raceway in Rotorua, the place that you call home on the mic with Paul Hickey. And of course, he is there with two other incredible DK, DK himself, Dar um, Darren Kelly, and none other than um, the guy you replaced, you horrible, horrible, horrible person. Um, you irreplaceable, to be honest. Of course, Cole Armstrong. Those guys were practicing last night racing tonight. Yeah, Richie Stanaway in a super stock as well, what a sight. But it also in a guy called Horse Ross Ashby's 38M super stock tank. That's another guy that's well known. He's um, got the lap of the gods over in some place called Bathurst and of course that is Greg Murphy so um, if you're in the central North Island after you've finished today there's probably just enough time to go up and meet Gates at <laughs> TWS Paradise Valley Raceway. There you go Sonia Hickey, we've got you. <laughs> Matty J in the Moorbark, Psycho Jay-Z S13 on the line with Daniel Smith and the Talk Performance S15. Well, this should be three. a tight battle. It's a new car for for Daniel Smith, and he said to me, why didn't he not go? What's going to happen here? I mean, Daniel Smith could almost pull out of the lap and say, no, you didn't go the right way, but Daniel Smith's the drifter, and he says, come on, let's just get into it. Back it in. It's time to go drifting. So, yeah, interesting what's happened at the start there. It's throwing me off actually watching what's happening. Matty J, though, looking good for the rest of the run at the moment. Big smoke show from Matty. Daniel Smith, though, he's right there in that talk performance machine. Now, if we were to hark back to yesterday, I'm pretty sure that Matty J took the inside of the cones yesterday as well. Yeah, so um, maybe he didn't realise or didn't know which side of the track he was supposed to be on. If he's got a spotter, that spotter's going to be saying, um, bro, you're getting in trouble right now from the commentary team. Yeah, 
I actually haven't seen that for some time. And is it is it quite literally just an active lead, or how does that fall into? I'm sure we'll find out. Oh, so I think they'll just look at it and probably give a uh, maybe a, a minor deduction, if anything, for the uh, the the oh, sorry the lead car in this case. Wasn't it? Yeah, it was the lead car, so yeah, just go the wrong way around. The, the other thing to think of is maybe these two commentators that are sitting in here are just talking about holes in our heads. Great to see lots and lots of people here in Taupo of all ages. Absolutely of course, the, uh, the safety of our ears is very important. You can see, hey, it's uh, it's uh, Daniel Spotter over there, Daniel Lynham, and then on the on the other side, he's still looking at the phone. They're actually watching the replay, um, which is Jason Smith. Yeah, you're getting spoken about. Look at these beautiful <laughs> cars. That's one I love. Mac on the side, the big Mac himself, which is Aaron Habib. So, of course, later on this afternoon, we are switching to Sky Sport, the home of the D1NZ. This is Repco D1NZ. This is round one. And certainly looking forward to uh, bringing the big show to Sky later on this afternoon. Just after 2 o'clock or 2 o'clock, where is our other car? Here he's. I think he's starting to head this way now. Matty so, Day. Yeah, interesting to see which way the judges see this at the moment with the deduction potential from Matty J going the wrong way around those cones. Daniel Mostly Smith down, coming out of some vehicle there. Yeah, the thing about here yeah, previously working at the track, the drift cars, there's always a lot of oil spots hanging around. Oh, look, that must have been off one of those other classes that ran here. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's a huge coincidence that for whatever reason, the uh, the oil that's down around the start area just happened to be where the circuit cars all dropped it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it was always a circuit. So Daniel's going to follow the rules. I've got to go around the outside. You should too. Hey, that actually looked like Matty J wanted to go on the outside, so maybe <laughs> he just got it wrong. We'll just say that's the case. As Daniel Smith sets himself up nicely at the start of this lap here, Oh, how far do you want to back that thing in from? Just runs over the ripples. That's okay. Uh-oh, big. Oh, big correction there. Yeah, so uh, something's happened to Matty J in behind there as he got back into a drift he has. So hopefully nothing ma major mechanical-wise as a couple of those beautiful Nissans make their way around the final turn and big smoke show. Oh, ooh, close. Well, actually, it probably would be deemed a wheel off, but Matty J also doing the same behind on the end of that run. No chance of a wheel off because I'm not paying the grass fines. All right. So, my director, <laughs> I don't think you realise, I, I, I was trying to... He was like, yeah, he was on your side there. eyes <laughs> away from the fact that something may have happened. There was already dirt there. George and the team had him laid the seeds down here. So, um, of course, we see a bit of moisture on the ground, as we've talked about. That's probably from the... Um, Actually, that's, uh, that, that's been there for a little while. And yeah, so if that was water, it probably would have dried up. That's, uh, that's been there for some time. We've seen it yeah. all morning. We'll say it's since Super Sprint and yeah. a couple of weeks ago. Which way is it going to go? Is it going to be the man on the left-hand side, which is Matty J, the psycho Jay-Z, or will it be the man on the right, talk performance? Oh, my gosh, look at the bling. Who's it going to be? Let's go down to the big boss himself, Stephen MacGyver. Daniel Smith takes the win. So, Daniel Smith, there he is. And the talk performance, S13. Point live, it's got the 15 front of it. Good-looking car as well. He will take on the winner of this next battle, Ryan Perry on the line with Braden Mayer. Braden Mayer, he's in the black car. We've got Ryan Perry, he's in the red machine on the right-hand side. It goes down to the hands of Launch Master Willie as we set them loose out here on track. This is Topor International Motorsport Park. This is round one of the Repco D1NZ. Let's see what Ryan Perry can do from the lead position. This is the first run between these two drivers and straight into action for them both. A nice smooth arc as they get ready to switch. He's on his bumper. So good close proximity there from Braden and behind Ryan Perry. Oh, there's a big straight line through the middle there. He withheld the drift though. Uh, but yeah, trying to close up that gap. They come into the final corner for one more time. We talk about 10-0 advantages. Of course, at the moment, it's 100 is the score that these judges are all coming out of. And I'm going to say 100 points is going from all three judges in the way of Ryan Perry. So yeah, just touching on that again, in the past it's been three judges' scores added together to give them a score out of 100. This time it's 100 out of each judge, and what they'll do is they'll add those three scores together, divide them by three, which will give you the average of course, and that's how they'll score them for each run. And of course, big shout out to Joel Counter, Andrew Redwood, and Jairus JT Farido 
upstairs, doing the hard job. Probably one of the toughest jobs in drifting, isn't it? Um, absolutely. I had to think about it for a moment. <laughs> Sorry. Look at these people watching. He's like, go on. Watching the live stream, I'm sure. Just so sure there's still a little bit of liberation to see who's at fault for one of the incidents on track that we're waiting on. Uh, there's Adam Whitehead down in the pits there too in the Plan B S14. So Braden Mayer, there he is. He's taken the win against Daniel Caldwell already. And he's got some work to do. Second half of the battle with Ryan Perry. Ryan Perry, uh, he's done plenty of laps around here, just from down the road, road in Rotorua there. Okay, so I can let you know that, of course, the battle between um, Adam Whitehead and Rody Knowles, the judges have deliberated that it was the fault of Rody Knowles. So 10 minutes is the time that Adam Whitehead's been given. We can, I know that... Uh, Adam has made his way back out onto track, so we are going to see the second half of that battle. Let's have a look at the second half of this one here, though. Ryan Perry versus Braden Mayer. Mayer will lead this time here. He's in the black. Sylvia, make sure you go around the outside of the cones. So, yeah, looks like they've given it a good sweep this time around. There was a little complaint about the drivers of the marbles from the circuit race as they come into the section to initiate for the second half of the battle. All very shallow from Braden on the way in. So for quite a hard lap to set up from the lead and chase perspective. They both differ as we get through to run through the centre section. You can see again, they needed to be inside clip before working your way around the left-hand side now of the last turn. At this point here, we want to see the cars arc down. They're going to hit an inside clip there and then start washing out to the left-hand side of their piece of track there. A rolling burnout to finish, and that's essentially what we're looking for for a lap at Topwalk Round 1 of the Repco D1NZ. So Ryan Perry looking like he did enough to ensure that he kept that advantage after the first run, the big mistake from Braden Mayer in the chase position. All right, let's have a look at a few names that have been watching on the live stream. Atman Norman, how are you, my friend? Jake Farson, sorry that you're not there, not, not here. Tyler West, where are you? Come on back, my friend. Yeah, a couple tuning in from Australia, one from Canada. Yeah, where is everyone from? Let us know, Australia. Jaron Howarth, and that is the Plan B S14. We've got Brad, he's in the Gold Coast of Australia. Lots of people from Aussie. As it goes down to Stephen MacGyver, the king of decisions. Will it be the red car, Ryan Perry? Is it going to be the black car? And it's Ryan Perry. So there he is, Ryan Perry out of Rotorua and the RV powered S14. He'll go through to take on Daniel Smith as work we cut out. Daniel's driving very good in that car. Any damage over there on the side? Of course, that's where. Where was it? Inside? No, no, no. Uh, really hit the right hand side of the car as they came into the final turn. So, Rody, the cause of the damage, as Steve mentioned just before, so... So, I don't think Rody's very happy about this. I don't think he thinks he was at fault. Well, I mean, it was a very good lead run from Adam for the most part of it. And um, Rody, I mean, the only mistake that he made was when Rody hit him, so... Um, well, I'm always much a like Rody. fan, and I think a straight line's good. Oh, it was a good hit. <laughs> It's more fun when there's concrete on the other side and you send them. Okay, of course, we're talking about a different sport right now where that's okay. So, yeah, I'd like to say, I mean, good friends with Rody, I'd like to say that he uh, is right, but at the stage of, yeah, from where I'm sitting, and I'm sure you watch a replay and think that he's uh, maybe changed his decision on whether he thinks he's right or wrong there, but at the moment it's all up to the judges. We're just making sure that these drivers are in the right lead and chase position before we send them. And Rody, so I'm getting out of here. I've had enough of this. Oh, we're going to see an angry drive, are we, from the MTF Cambridge S13. Well, if you want to get some finance, can't give Rody Knowles a call. You can find him in Cambridge. Oh, I saw a couple of body parts fall off the back end. A bit of fiberglass, maybe, as they switch to come through, heading back to the last turn. So Rody Knowles has put a solid lead run in this time as well. Adam Knighthead, he's trying to chase, uh, close that gap up as they come into the final turn. Oh, Rody, a little bit of a recorrection. 
and he's washed himself wide certainly hasn't got the inner clip on the final turn got any other shout outs shout out to Sparky ah Shans with Sparky I got to uh I to go and have a chat with them last night. I was so excited oh. about that. <laughs> Alright, well, I guess I guess we'll uh, find out when we get down which direction it is. Will it be roadie? Is it going to be a head? Of course, with the finish of that lap there, I think we could probably decide who it's going to be. But Yeah, well, I mean, Brody, uh like I say, it'd be interesting to see what he thinks after he sees the replay from the position of the car. I mean, he wants to be right and say that he wasn't the cause. One thing I will say, Rody, is you've got a space at the front of your bumper, um, bonnet you could sell. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> have a fight, have a fight. Plan B. Righty Knowles. Will it be Adam Whitehead? That's the white car. Is it going to be the yellow car, which is Righty Knowles? Is it going to be Stephen McGuire that takes the win? The answer is yes. And race control finally comes through with Adam Whitehead taking the win. Thumbs up, fingers up. Okay, make sure they're the right things. So next two cars out on track, your third place qualifier Zach Zayden in the Drift Antics S15, good to see new livery on that, and our southerner Sam Edinburgh in the ex Fangadan Woolhouse. Yeah, that's the Holden v -E. Commodore. Holden Commodore. It's the VIP Drift team, VIP structures and steels, frames and steels. He's going to be in the chase position out of the Drift South team. Making the way up into the D1NZ and it's the Zack Attack Drift Antics machine of Zack Zayden who leads. Big switch as he comes through. Going to see this VE start closing that gap and making his way up to the final turn, Tony. Yeah, so Zack is putting a good solid lead run there. He's used the handbrake putting on some big angle in the last one there. And oh, I don't know if he's still there. He's managed to uh, hang on there. They did talk about a little bit of deceleration. And the judges this morning going into that final turn with the amount of speed that they're carrying on did that throw Daniel uh, sorry Samuel off uh, Edinburgh that is when he went into the final turn uh, but Zach Zayden otherwise hit all the clipping points pretty well you see a bit of uh, as long as they don't need any uh, structural steel but if they did then I know that Sam Edinburgh would say VIP structural steel great place to go to get it as we go to get this next battle That beautiful looking 86 SR20 powered Keske Nagashima, the 86 fighters, and Aaron Habib, two of the best looking cars out there on track in the pro sport category. Sorry, Dean Young, this doesn't exclude you as well. You've got a beautiful looking car. You're a beautiful man. So, the Drift Antics Motorsport, Zach Zayden coming around there. Now is that the, he's got a couple of cars, is that the 2J powered one or is that the uh, Zach's one? Yeah, this this one's the 2J, one. uh, this is the 2J is one. The one. Yeah, okay. So I believe he's got a, a V8 powered one as well, yes. Probably. Yeah. They all have toys. Lots of them. So Sam Edinburgh, it's a little bit further back there as they make their way around. Oh, look at the blue skies oh, opening up. That cloud's slowly burning off. The color off. that we're seeing here. <laughs> Did actually, I have stopped talking about the grass. <laughs> I don't I, really. Hayden loves it. Hayden, of course, big shout out to the team. And of course, uh, George, Hayden, Marty here. Marty won't be here. It's the weekend. Yeah, no, Marty's here. I had a catch he? up with him this morning. Oh, yeah, yeah. Such a great man. So it's always good to come back and catch up with the former workmates. He keeps trying to be grumpy to me, and I just won't accept it. <laughs> this is the Repro D1 NZ National <laughs> Championship. <laughs> Round number one here, Topol International Motorsport Park. Great opportunity to teach people how to say Topol as well. Toe, I've got a big Topol. I've got no money. This seems like my life. Well, of course, later on this afternoon, live on Sky Sport on Fox Sport. Motorsport.tv as well. Dyers Road. ITM. ITM, of course, in the form of Dale ITM supporting the D1NZ and the Super Sprint Championship. They'll be here for the historic Grand Prix in the middle of January. Yeah, Holden, the, uh, see, traditionally in the historic Grand Prix, they pick sort of one maker cars. And uh, over the years, there's been a Ford one, a Jaguar one, this one, the Holden one, and it's going to be huge. I mean, Holden's a massive in New Zealand as it is. Speaking of Holden's, Sam Edinburgh. Ooh. 
All right, what's happened here? And who's broken? One of them is broken. Who is it? Is it Zach? Oh, okay. Oh, so Sam Edinburgh here. Did he have Sam a bit of a, He washed Edinburgh. out white, didn't he? Edinburgh. Mm. So under that new rule, no five-minute car. You uh, no five-minute car. <laughs> so we're going to talk about what's going to happen here. So he is going to head back down into the pit area. When he goes in there, he literally the car, the drivers have two minutes to fix the car, if not out of competition. So yeah, traditionally it's a five-minute bell almost, isn't it? They get to pull in, they oh can jack the God. car up. They're not even allowed to. You See look at it. How amazing again, George's yeah. flights. So, so there's an issue with the right rear wheel, I believe. You can see a little smoke coming out the back. Or is it oil? I hope he's not tipping oil on the track. Ah, he'll be right. We can burn that one off with uh, some Zestinos, Bellinos. It's definitely a beautiful day and a beautiful day for drift. Topor International Motorsport Park. Look at that blue sky. This is Altera. This is New Zealand. Well, Kesuke Nagashima, he gets ready for his lap. He's like, I don't care about what's happening before me. It's my turn to drift. Well, while these guys head back into the pits, he's going to have two minutes to get this thing ready. We will get ready for our next um, battle. Our next battle will be Kesuke Nagashima versus Aaron Habib. Habib in the BMW. Kesuke Nagashima in the 86 Fighters, 86. As we look to see what is going to happen here, he's going to stop outside. He's hoping that his crew are going to be parked right there. Though we will know there's an issue. The second he parks up, bang, your two minutes has begun. So they can't jack the car up either, so uh, I think it's more like an oil issue. There was oil, looks like that was coming out. They actually had that car a fair chunk apart as well, uh, a little bit earlier in the day. Now, one of the things, as with most motorsports uh, championships, of course, these drivers do have comms back to their pit wall, so you can see that they would have said, hey, look, I think this is the case. Um, we talk about, you now who's that in the background, is that? So there's oil Barry. on the line, I understand. But this is one of the amazing things I see with the D1NZ. Jordan Joyce, he's in there going, OK, what can I help with? You can see, you can also see that the Pull and Burry family, they're like, OK, we can help you as well. We've got two cars, we've got double the crew. The bonnet comes back down. Have they looked up and said, don't worry? There is oil on the ground there. And yeah, look, because look over the left-hand side Willie. of the screen. Oh, yeah, no, that's OK. Does the track find us for that? Because we should probably... No, that's not it. oil, that's water. That's water. But what yes. Willie's doing is putting some sawdust and some spill oh, kit. the water. Just in case the water that's doesn't right. evaporate very fast in the cold wind. Perfect. Yeah, so... It's the VIP frames and trusses, they're in Auckland, they're in Palmerston, and they're in Car um, Christchurch. What is the official call going to be? Still keep the Drift Corp sticker on there too. Once a thing, a Dan, so always I a thing, a Dan in the eyes. Yeah, well, he's going to pull away, and there's probably going to be a, a, a little puddle of oil, potentially. So, I understand that there was contact made. This is breaking news with this battle here. We're thinking that this guy is going to be gone. No, he's got five minutes because there was some form of contact between himself and Zach. So Zach has been deemed at fault, which means that the driver and behind the wheel of this car here, Sam Edinburgh, can take five minutes. He's back out there. He's got a... I was going to give you the like CRC 5005. <laughs> so he's got five minutes of coming through and having a look. Ah, uh, so here, yeah, so on top of the two, he does get the five. Ah, uh, okay. Look, I, I reckon there's oil on the belt or something like that that's causing a bit of slipping. Is this supercharged? Yeah, big procharger on the front of that. Okay. Here it is. Yeah, it wasn't okay. contact. There was so the lead, so he was led off track by the lead car. So the judges have deemed that it is the fault of the lead car. Now, as we know in drifting, it is the responsibility of the chase driver to 
mimic the lines, the angle and the speed of the car in front of them. Now of course what can often happen and is deemed to have happened in this situation that the lead car came off his line coming up to the, um, coming through the circuit because he came off his line using this car as the uh, mobile clipping point he took himself off the track because of the actions of the lead driver. Yeah, so it does make sense once it's been explained, and, and uh, yeah, it did look like, I mean, Zach, he, he came into that final corner, he stacked on the angle, and uh, did wash certainly wide. How much rear heat does KSK want in his car? Because it doesn't look like he stopped doing skits. And Aaron Habib now. <laughs> Give yourself some <laughs> grip, son. Aaron Habib. So it's Keske versus Aaron Habib. Aaron Habib in sixth position. Keske was our 11th qualifier. And it looks like we are going to see that car head back out on track as we see the next battle on track. It is Aaron Habib in the BMW who is going to lead out Keske Nagashima. Nagashima kicks himself into action. It's Habib who leads though. Where's Keske on his back bumper? That's where Keske is. He pops out of the smoke and he's right on the back door of, well, one of the closer battles that we've seen from Chasers. And that, is, of course, is Keske Nagashima in that 86. I get no respect for how good it looks. But a solid lap by um, Aaron Habib coming through to finish and heads back on to the front straight. Now, something to talk about because one of the things I looked at is essentially pressures. A lot of these drivers here, they look like their cars are getting a little bit more side bite and stuff like that from the fact that their cars just look to be having a bit, little bit less pressure in the rear tyres. Of course, one of the rules that we had last year was a tyre pressure rule. There are no tyre pressure rules in the D1NZ anymore. Yeah, and so surprisingly a lot of the drivers didn't even know or were aware of that. There was a lot of chatter that went on as soon as it was brought up by Kenny Ruddle that, hey, the tyre pressure rule is gone and there was like a, 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 like a gasp, like, what, hey? <gasps> Yeah. And, and all of a sudden, they should read the regs. I'm talking about reading the regs. This isn't something to read. It is something to tell you. Sadly, um, Sam Edinburgh has had to retire from competition. So he was led off track. Now, what happens there? So he's going to head back to his pits. He's just uh, headed across. You can see on the hard right-hand side of our shot there. So that means that... Zach's going to have to finish his lap. Yeah, so yeah, under the new rules as well, he just doesn't get the buy through. He does need to initiate, doesn't need to complete the whole circuit. Uh, but Zach, I'm sure he likes to But can he zero out? Well, so can it be considered OMT and therefore. <laughs> I don't know. So Aaron Habib, after a real solid, I mean, it was a, a, to, to have a really good chase, you have to have a really good lead, and that's probably not the last time I'll say that over the today. Well, uh, we'll find out after this battle what is going to happen as we see these two drivers lining up side by side. And of course, in the little Ace 86 Corolla, it is Keske Nagashima. He's got the SR under the bonnet. He's a 455 horsepower. I'm pretty sure he's more than that. I heard he. But anyway, we will find out. Find out what happens at the end of this battle. Who is going to take the lead? Is it going to be my favourite car in the entire D1NZ? Or is it going to be Aaron Habib in that mighty BMW? So Keske there, not a lot of smoke out of that SR20 compared to the BMW behind him, but he's put a little bit of a gap on Aaron Habib, so the uh, proximity between these two, the, the chase and the lead from Aaron Habib, could be a little bit of an advantage to Keske here. Well, Keske comes through to finish his lap. Remember, no switchbacks, big rolling burnout to finish, comes across the line. Aaron Habib, you've got a little bit of work to do, my friend. Just having a look at some of the other laps, we're uh, obviously looking for their final positions in the top eight. At the moment, we've got Curtis Lilly, who'll be going up against Daniel Edwards on the left-hand side of the tree from Justin Patterson, who's going to go up against Adam Whitehead. Daniel Smith's made it into the eight. He'll be facing Ryan Perry. Then we've got Zach Zayden and Samuel Edinburgh. Edinburgh has to retire from competition. That's going to allow Zach Zayden to go through, and it'll be up against the winner of Aaron Habib versus Keske Nagashima. Nagashima on the right-hand side. Aaron Habib will move on to the left. We will go down to the King of Kings, which is Stephen McIver, and he will point in the direction of our winner. Will it be the man on the left, Aaron Habib? Is it going to be Keske on the right? Waiting, waiting. And yeah, Steve McIver right, is winding way, up which here. Which way is Mr. McIver going to go? And he bowls it <laughs> into... That was a... I tell you what, Keske just knocked that bowl for a six. 
There it is, Mr. McIver. How are we going out there, Stephen? Is it beautiful? Just a little update, lads, too. If you're wondering what happened with the VIP car, Wyatt retired. Uh, power steering issue. Now, they were offered the chance by Kenny, our technical manager, to go out, but they said no. They thought about all the other competitors, didn't want to be dropping power steering fluid, so that's why they pulled the pin. Good competitors, those VIP boys, but sad for them for the day. Well, sad for them, but what an amazing... Uh it's the gestures that we see, and we see it constantly. Sportsmanship in the D1NZ is always paramount to every one of these teams. Even if you're about to, like, if I can beat my competitor, but if I can give him a tyre or something like that, I'm going to do it. Yeah, I mean, it's Saturday morning, round one of the Repco D1NZ National Drifting Championship, and the sportsmanship is already showing through. And, I mean, this is coming from someone who's travelled up from the South Island as well. So thinking of that, a lot of time, a lot of money, a lot of effort gone into this, and Samuel Edinburgh showing some great sportsmanship early on in the season, and uh, that's certainly not going to be the last time we talk about that. Absolutely not. So we're just going for a trip here of Taupo International Motorsport Park. This is the way that most people are used to travelling on this track, aren't they? Yes, yeah, so it's a little right-hander here. And you wash wide. And you can pull it up real late as you go down into turn number seven. Good to see that launch master, Willie. He was taking the opportunity to stand in the shade. So your top eight, left side of the tree, right side of the tree, all will come out on track this time around. Oh, let's go up and see... Uh, this is what the drivers see when they head out on the track. Look, they see cars. <laughs> <laughs> um, just got a message from a, a person I used to pit crew for. He's, um, he said I might be heading back over for the summer. Yeah, I did see that pop up on the live stream there. I was going to take a chance to uh, slot that in. Hello to Ben Finneymore. Ben yeah. Finneymore is the youngest ever sprint car champion in the history of actually the world. He's literally the world. Great driver on dirt. Would great to be great to see him in a uh, drift car. Has, has he ever driven one before, Benny? Like out there. Drive anything. Have you seen what he also got? He's one of those people that he's got one of those motors you like. Ah, oh, good on him. I don't know, like a 1970s body as well, or it's shout out Chad stunning. McKenzie as well. Previous Pro Sport champion winner. Oh, Series 107. No, Series 3 it is. Yeah, so it's um, pretty special. Michael Bangator, he's always on the live stream as well, isn't he? Very active in the comments. Good to see you along and streaming in for the Ripco D1NZ National Drifting Championship. Here we are live at Topol International Motorsport Park. Look at that, Mount Tohara again in the background. Beautiful shots from George and the Inspire U Media drone. There we go, Daniel Edwards in car number 45 will lead Curtis Lilly out. It is the top eight, we're looking at the left hand side of the tree, we are getting down to the nitty gritty of the Pro Sport Championship, round number one. Well, it's getting to the tight end. Hello to uh, Richard Undies, to his wife Tony and Connor, they're watching as well. This is the 45 of Daniel Edwards, as you've just mentioned, nothing worse than somebody replicating what you just <laughs> said, my apologies, and of course Curtis Lilly. Nissan or Nissan, 2JZ versus RB30. 100 horsepower difference between the two of them, I can tell you. This is probably the best that uh, that Curtis Lilly's done. He was a very happy man. Look, hey, what's happened here? Have we got a position swap, or has he had to reverse out for a reason? Comes down to Launchmaster Willie. What's he going to say? Drift to wreck on the door. Hello to Hayden Story. Yeah, so this is a lead and chase swap over. So there we go. Now we're right. Well, they are side by side. This is the next battle of the day. This is to find a spot in the in the semis. It's Daniel Edwards versus Curtis Lilly. Curtis Lilly in the chase position. Daniel Edwards leads up front, comes through and switches hard into the centre section here at Topol. Yeah, real strong start from Daniel Edwards there in the Horizon Tires 180. He's set himself up beautifully with a great initiation over the top of the hill. Back up to the final turn we go. And then, well, he's closing the gap. Curtis Lilly, what can he do as they fire it through out of the final turn? Oh, big correction by Lilly. And they come through to finish. Are we going to call advantage in the way of Daniel Edwards? Yeah, well, I mean, the um, Daniel was a little bit off his line in the final 
final turn. He didn't get down to that in a clip on the final part of the corner. But uh, yeah, Curtis Lilly, he needs to mimic and needs to keep that proximity as the judges ask for. So it's not all about the line as far as a chase position goes. You need to mimic that leader. And uh, Daniel Edwards, although being offline, Curtis, yeah, I'd say that probably looking a little bit of advantage towards Daniel there. Well, it's uh, going to come down to the second half of the battle. Of course, we've also got coming up Justin Patterson versus Adam Whitehead, Daniel Smith versus Ryan Perry, and Zach Zayden versus Kesuke Nagashima. Who's going to go into the top four? These two are here. These two right now are trying to find one of those spots. So Daniel there making his way back around to the start line. And of course, crossing across to Sky Sport, Foxtel Australia, Motorsport. TV later on this afternoon. I'll tell you what, there is so much heat on this track at the moment when we've seen all sorts of different temperatures. They're saying it's 23 degree high and the wind speed of 13. That is the forecast today here in Topo, but I tell you, track temperatures are going to be a big difference to what we're seeing with the 23 out there, aren't we? Yeah, well, they're only going to get hotter and hotter as the day goes on, and then more and more rubber. I mean, these radials, the 235 radials, they run in the Pro Sport Championship on the rear of these cars, or well, maximum 235. I'm pretty sure most of them will be running 235s. So going around to the second half of the battle. Well, it is the second half of the battle time now. It's Curtis Lilly versus Daniel Edwards. Curtis Lilly, he will be in that beautiful S14. That's the purple machine on the right-hand side. 273 is his car number. He's going up against the 45, which is Daniel Edwards. It goes down to the hands of launch. Master Willie. Yeah, you can see the heat coming across the screen there. Look at that. It's a great shot. I thought it was just a weird camera. So Repco. All right, we go down to Willie. He's given the 3 2 1 launch. So they launch away from the line. It's Curtis Liddy on the outside. He's having one of his best rounds. Can he go all the way? He can make it better as he starts hammering it down in that S14. We'll see him just grab a bit of break. And off he goes into the section. Here comes Daniel Edwards trying to close that gap. And Daniel Edwards is going to get on the door. So Curtis Liddy's got that car hooked up. Look at the left wheel almost lifting up as he comes around the right hander. And they make their way down to the final turn. Curtis Lilly, a little bit of a lead over Daniel Edwards. Lilly, of course, has created a gap. He comes through again, hammering the throttle. As Edwards, is, he's pulled out a drift. He has pulled out a drift. And Daniel Edwards knows he's already got his hand out the window. Son, I just won that. So it could have been an axle. It made him sort of just really pull up. There's a... How is that, though? Daniel Edwards, like, that's the sort of thing I would do. Like, literally, hand out the window. Chair, I won. <laughs> wow. And sun's out. Gun's out. Looking down at the young drift team there on pit walk. Enjoying the sun. Nice and relaxed there, isn't he? Second half. Oh, sorry. First uh, battle for the bottom of the left-hand side of the tree. It is Justin Patterson versus Adam Whitehead. Adam Whitehead, of course, having a slight issue with uh, the plan B. He'll be looking for a plan C to get himself a little bit further ahead in the competition. So we're going now to get the result of the Curtis Lilly Daniel Edwards battle. We've got Daniel Edwards on the right hand side, Curtis Lilly on the left hand side. Stephen McIver will give us the result of that very shortly. He's loving this, isn't he? All right, which way is it going to go? Is it going to slide in the way of Curtis Lilly? Is it going to be Daniel Edwards? Daniel Edwards, of course, the black car on the right, Curtis Lilly on the left. Who's going to be? Daniel Edwards takes the win. It's an underarm this time from Mr. McIver. He's Australian. So the next two on the line. As they leave, Adam Whitehead will lead Justin Patterson. Adam being the higher qualifier. MTF Finance on the door of Justin Patterson's car. It's plan B on the side of Adam Whitehead's Nissan S14. It's S14 versus S13. And they're straight into action as Adam Whitehead starts making his way down through into the centre section here at Topol International Motorsport Park. This is round one of the Repco D1NZ. A little bit of a correction at our chase car. Yeah, so Adam Whitehead's looking just as good as he did in the lead run against Rody Knowles as well. He's going to wash wide here and try and cut down to that inner clip, which he gets down relatively nicely. He's almost just half a metre off where the judges want to see him, but a real good run, but a good chase. He's uh, Justin, he's real happy with that in the background. Justin is really really enjoying his drifting of course he's on to his third season i think of drifting um he started 
drifted in the D1NZ eight months after getting behind the wheel for the first time. <laughs> and look, he just looks like he should have been here all the, the whole time. Hey, I mean, there's no end like the DP, and if you're going to jump in, you might as well do it. That's where my problem is. I can't um, swim. Yeah, well, I actually can, but it's just that it, it <laughs> went with the story. What did they say the wind was? 30 k's? Yeah, 13 kilometers. That definitely looks like a 17 kilometer an hour wind. So, speaking of the VIP cars and the sportsmen, just a uh, little update that Daniel in the S15 is leading the Drift South ch Championship Ooh. at the moment as well. Hey, well, I've got, of course, yesterday was Connor Halligan's birthday. A late happy birthday to Connor Halligan. Also, Michael Clark from Casper Transmission. It was his birthday as well. I didn't message or call like I normally do, so I'll say happy birthday across the live stream. Well, hey, that, that's the good thing about being a great friend of yours, Steve. You always get a phone call on the birthday, and I always try and return the favour as much as I can. I literally had to go up and get a new job so I could not work on my birthday because of that silly thing I do with calling somebody for their birthday every day. 365 phone calls a year, but that doesn't matter because we've got drifting on the screen. It's MTF Finance, Cambridge, and it's 13. It is the plan B. is 14. It's Justin Patterson who will lead out. Adam Whitehead into action they go. Nice solid lead line right now comes through inside. Clip. So Justin Patterson there, he's pulled off a good lead as well. He's shown a really good line. So both the lead runs are very good here from both these drivers so far. So good. Justin Patterson now is going to tuck it through to the inside clip on the final corner. Hand out the window. It's got to be. He's got to be. Come on, do it. Ooh, he kept his hands on the steering wheel. You think he got radio through? Nah, there it was. <laughs> at the end, of course. <laughs> Who was the so, best for it? Yeah, it's going to come down to the chase, I think. I think those, both those lead runs are real solid. Who do you think is the best for throwing? Oh, it absolutely has to be Rawity Hater. Nah, I reckon he learnt off one other person, though. Oh, is that Nico? Oh, well done. But, Ra, well, you're not actually allowed to have your hand out the window in the drift. No, what are they there. doing? Is this, they're swatting flies. Yeah, what's it like? I think there's a. Yeah, Ra always often complains about wasps flying yeah, around. He must he's allergic to them, so he's got to get more. Yeah. Here they come, Justin Patterson and Adam Whitehead. There's going to be a close call from the judges. I can't put my sort of sway on either way here. What's Mr. McIver going to come? I'm almost a little bit excited to see what he well, does. We've with got the Adam result. Whitehead on the left hand side. We've got Justin Patterson on the right. Who's it going to be? Oh, there comes that word again, the deliberation from the judges upstairs trying to figure out, and like I say, it was a hard decision. Is it going to be a first look at a uh, one more time run for you, Steve? You know, you hate, you hate seeing Please them. Please say, what's going to be? It's, what's he doing? Those, those hands saying it's going to be a, oh, oh terrible. We try, I try to get, I actively try to get rid of a one more time. So every judge said 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, I assume. So that's 150, 150, that's one more time. Unless but one of them was able to come up with a decision. And they, mm. So next two cars out on grids, we've got Daniel Smith against Ryan Perry. So Ryan Perry being the higher qualifier in seventh will lead out Daniel Smith and the torque performance is 13.5. All right, we're all going to go down to launch Master Willy. He is going to give them the full send. It is Talk Performance Developments. That is Daniel Smith, DK Smith, Excavation, Digger Dan. And we've got Ryan Parry, who will be in the lead position. Ryan Parry, certainly not a stranger to Z1NZ. Great to have him back after a great, a great season last year. See what he can do in the triple seven versus Daniel Smith in the chase position. So a great start for Ryan Perry, nice and wide on the initiation. That's going to set him up probably for a good run, holding some good speed down through the centre part of the section and gapping a little bit on Digger Dan. He's closing up the gap though. Well, Digger Dan certainly closing up the gap by running that sh uh, slightly shallower line, but that was an inside clip and you see a slight push by the chase car. Can they close it up? They come through to finish anyway. So good to see the proximity is getting closer and closer the further into the battles we get. And that's the best part about watching pro sport is that the battles only get better and better as the day goes on. So it couldn't call the advantage either way. Probably Ryan Perry slightly had pretty good line through the majority of his run, if not the most of it, all of it. Another so I know we tried our, um, in the off season, I did my best to have the OMT removed from the d winnings Yeah, tell us more about that. Oh, I didn't win, so... There's no point. Was there, 
you know, was it just a straight out no? Was there some some arguments or discussion? Oh, there was, there was a uh, X amount of, uh, of of emails going back and forth. I, I had a strong argument. <laughs> well, it's great to see people enjoying the Kai here. Of course, Kai. What does that mean? It means food. Yeah, make sure you head on down and see Carl at Carl's Kitchen. Great burgers. Great, even better bacon than egg rolls. They do Uber Eats. Because I mean, I'm, I'm sure the amazing broadcast thing could do with. Big shout out to the team from uh, Super Sprint Productions, bringing all the broadcast coverage here of not just the D1NZ, but also the Super Sprint Motorsport New Zealand Championship. I'm so huh? glad that we don't have to be on the screen anymore. It's amazing. <laughs> hey, oh, are we going? Off we go. Daniel Smith. He will be in the lead position. Ryan Perry will be in chase. Let's see what Digger Dan can do. DK Smith, excavations. Certainly a friend of the D1NZ. He's been part of, oh, he's been part of the furniture here since the inception. So nice, or oh, he's not as, he hasn't got as much angle as Ryan Perry in the chase position to what Dan had, uh, putting on a good smoke show out of the front as Digger Dan. The talk performance, beautiful looking car that as well. Well presented, Ryan Perry looking good in behind as well. So Come on, another, Dan. Yeah, it's going to be another tough one to call for the judges, this one. I'll probably do that same silly thing again. Well, they come through to finish, and one thing I have to say about Dan Smith, who's just leading in, the, in our shot at the minute, is he has looked the most comfortable I have ever seen him driving in the D1NZ this weekend. We saw him in the first one, I think he just struggled with the cars. We saw him in the second season, um, again, didn't really have as much fun as normally. And uh, now he's... But look, there is the uh, there is the pits, the hive of activity. Hey, look, oh, that's us. Good looking gentleman look sitting Cameron. there. Yeah, how you doing, guys? How are we, team? Yeah, very good. All right. It's a nice little box we've got down here, OB2. OB2? Cool. Yeah. So now it's, uh, it's, it's certainly, hey, we were so quick and so far gone. <laughs> Disappeared. I don't know if anyone noticed the beautiful Christmas tree we had in the background there as well. It's the festive season. Who's it going to be? Will it be Ryan Perry on the left-hand side? Is it going to be Daniel Smith on the right? It's going to go down. The man in the middle, Stephen McIver. A little shake of the head from Steve. This is three strikes left. This is three strikes right. So I'll tell you what, Stephen McIver looks like he has been working out. That guy is a muscle man this year. So plenty of deliberation going on. The judges, Andrew Redwood, Joel Counter, and JT Farido upstairs with the hard job. We have a result. Who will it be? And Ryan oh. Berry takes the win. So thumbs up from Perry. Oh, a little bit too far on the release of the clutch. Gets <laughs> to fire that car back into life. Don't break an axle. <laughs> so Ryan Perry through to the top four. And Ryan Perry is going to go up against the winner of this battle right here. This is the 86 Fighters, the 86 Fighters. Keske Nagashima going up against Zach Zayden. So Zach Zayden qualifying in third position. The high qualifier of the two will lead them out into the section. Topol International Motorsport Park, round number one. Well, let's see what Zach Zayden can do. Drift antics, motorsport events, lifestyle, traveling around. That's what he likes to do. Three wheels it up over the hill as he makes the initiation around the outside of that line. The judges want to see. And Keske in behind there trying to close up the gap through the centre part of the Dale ITM section. Zach Zach Zayden heading up to the top end of the track now. That's a nice solid lead line this time. And uh, look, that guy's here. He's just come back from the LZ World Tour. He looks like he's got a lot of drift on him too. Yeah, so Zach, good solid run. Keske wasn't too far behind the whole run as well. So as a result of Zach putting on a great lead run, Keske able to put on a good chase run as well. A couple of very talented drivers in the bottom half of the right-hand side bracket. And, and I'm not saying that Zach sent me a Facebook message to say, can you send everyone to my Zach Antics YouTube channel? He's also sponsored by LMGD, uh, LMGD from Sunny Hawks Bay. They're the 
people responsible for the new wrap for his car? Yeah, I haven't actually um, seen that in, in person, and I've just noticed it on screen. It must be chrome blue wrap. It's not just a blue wrap. It's an actual blue chrome wrap, which is uh, also, yeah, very expensive. There they are, Zach Zayden, the 2JZ powered S15. And Kesuke Nagashima, SR20, A86. Look how happy Kesuke is as well. Kesuke's always happy. I mean, look how staunch Zach looks. He's not really. So the 786 and 86 head to head, looking to go ahead into the top four to take on Ryan Parry in the right hand part of the tree. And a message saying Stephen MacGyver may look okay. Look good, like because he's been working out. But this person said, You look cute in your wee trailer. Oh, you know what my response was? What about Tony G? Oh, <laughs> all right, let's have a look at the second half of the battle between these two amazing drivers. This is round one of the Repco D1NZ. This is the Pro Sport Championship to find the final spot on the top four. Actually, there's an OMT to decide that. So Zach Zayden showing good proximity on Keske. He got himself a little bit out of shape there on the first part of the section. Come down through the Dale ITM. Dipper, as we'll call it. As they head up to the top end of the track, one more turn, but it's not easy. It's an inside clip through to an outside zone. Hard on the gas for the little SR powered 86 Keske. And look, you can see the hand out the window for Zach Zayden. Wow, that one's going to be another hard one to call from the judges. Oh my gosh, the response to what about Tony was, he looks way more younger looking. Man. Still not cute, which isn't a bad thing, I won't take that. Younger. You look younger. Thank you very much. I mean, you should be, you are. <laughs> Using the vehicle. And that is Kiske's spotter right there. I think they spot via a cell phone. Oh, look at the jewel. Look at that. that, that looks quite cool. pretty, wasn't it? <laughs> Dancing cars. Oh, uh, that was. Yeah, that Do you reckon that was planned? That was very in sync, wasn't it? There is no way that Drifters planned anything. <laughs> they hardly. They struggle to get just out on track. Kiske Nagashima on the right hand side. Who's going to take the win? Will it be Zach Zayden? Oh, I've got a 50 50 chance of getting this right. I think I'm, I'm going to put. I'm going to go Kiske here. I think Kiske just. Zach's chase was a little bit messy, was it? Who's it going to be? Who's it going to be? Andrew Redwood, Joel Counter, and Jarius Farido. Jarvis says, one, two, three strikes, it's going to be Kesuke Nagashima. Clap, clap, clap. So he's very happy, oh look at that. Oh my gosh, he's actually got a horn in there. I think that thing's road registered <laughs> as well. That's yeah, hilarious. Just, for those who know what a limmy finger is, no limmy fingers in the D1, please. <laughs> what a limmy finger is? The old, the that, burnout that's a burnout thing, season. yeah. So Adam Whitehead, this is the one more time will lead out Justin Patterson, plan B, up against the MTF Cambridge Finance S13. Look how well grooved Adam Whitehead's beard is. All right, they're going to be side by side as they have their first run of the OMT. It is Adam Whitehead who leads them out in the plan B, Nissan S14. It's the S13 in behind, MTF Cambridge on the side of Justin Patterson's car. Can he close the door? Can he gain back some proximity? It looks like he can! Well, this is a great chase from Justin Patterson there. I haven't seen him drive this aggressively in the chase mode for some time, and he's pushed it so oh. hard into the final turn. Wow, My he man. was doing so well. I think he still is. I think he still is. That was awesome. Well, he came through to finish the section. That's going to put him in a massive advantage. But Justin Patterson, maybe just as a team, they were like, sorry for what uh, Rody did. I'll throw this one away for you. Wow, a big shake of the head from Justin as well. As he shakes the gravel. Still one of the happiest people on the D1NZ. That guy's oh. always so confident, so happy. He's just... Well, he'll take a lot from the first half of that battle as well. That chase, it was he was all over the door of Adam Whitehead there. Nice and aggressive. He just couldn't hang on to it for the whole way. But can Justin put on an even better lead run to force the mistake from Adam Whitehead, who's going to be chasing? Which, if he manages to make him zero out, we could see these guys go one more time again. No. I mean, yes, of course. <laughs> Um, I know he's been having a bit of a bit of a tough time in the hospital this week, which has actually removed his wife from being here. Um, to Keg from DKM Fabrication, good to um, get a message on the Book of Face, tuning in via the live stream, wherever you are, my friend. I hope you're doing A-OK. -okay. Because there's a lot of people that have got drift cars that need work on them, so we need you to be up to <laughs> up to spec, back in the workshop, 
back on the grinder. Actually, no, he'll be on the welder. Because if you're a terrible engineer, you spend more time on the grinder. There <laughs> <laughs> we go. And Whitehead comes back to the line from the Sunny Hawks Bay in his own S14 this year instead of that RX-7 from last year. So Justin Patterson, can he force the issue? Of course he can, it's Justin Patterson. The MT of Finance, he's the boss too. See what he can do from the lead position, it's S13 versus 14, it's Patterson versus Adam Whitehead, plan B. Where's he gone? Lost in the cloud of S13 smoke, comes the switch. So a great lead run now from Justin Patterson being laid down, but Adam Whitehead, he's right there. Is he going to pop through the smoke? Still in drift mode as well. So he hasn't needed to have the massive proximity or the close proximity like he needed to, probably if the battle was closer. Maybe a little bit conservative on that run, Adam, but he's going to be doing enough to probably get the win there against Justin. So Justin, he look at that hand out yeah, the window. He's, he's, as. he's stoked. I mean, yeah, he'll still take something awesome from that, and uh, you'll see him get better and better as he uh, spends more time in the seat of that car. What a life's great humans. So this battle will determine the last of the top four. And the winner of this battle will be against Daniel Edwards. Oh, very good point. We've had a... Massive shout out to Joel Count. Congratulations on the wedding, man. Of course, Joel. <laughs> so there they are. Adam Whitehead on the left. Justin Patterson on the right in the black car. Down to Stephen McIver in pit lane. Left Adam Whitehead, right for Justin Patterson. And it is Adam Whitehead. Here he goes. <laughs> oh, Mr. McIver. That was beautiful. Look at him go. My man, my man. There is the top four. Adam Whitehead will head into the top four. So let's have a look. Who have we got here then? Who have we got on the left-hand side? Who's going to be taking on each other to find a space in the final? So Daniel Edwards, after qualifying in eighth position, will go through into the right-hand side, top four. Uh, sorry, left-hand side, top four. And Adam Whitehead, after being in fifth, will go to the left-hand, sorry, right-hand side. I'm getting my left and right mixed up. What's going on here, Steve? We've got Ryan Parry, who's come from grid, uh, sorry, qualifying in seventh, and Kesuke Nagashima, who qualified all the way down 11th. He's had to do an extra battle compared to all these guys. So is the extra track time coming into it? So top four, left and right, they're going to come together and we're going to have the final battle after the next couple of battles. So look, just for everyone that's tuning in via all the different Facebook pages around, we will obviously come through with the end of Pro Sport and then we'll be taking the stream down as we get ready to broadcast live on Sky Sport here in New Zealand. Fox Sport in Australia. So it looks like I think we're going to be on Facebook for the Pro Top 24 and then it will be into the Top 16 onwards via our broadcast partners, Sky Sport. Wow, what a great shot of Topol International Motorsport Park. That is, go on, say it, say it. It's just the grass. <laughs> <laughs> the grass. So... Oh, shout out to Enzo and Nova. You know who they are? Are they watching? Yeah, they are watching, because yeah. every time I say something, my darling wife and my princess are watching at home in Tauranga, and every time Dad says something, they're like pricking their ears up and like, is he going to come Where's home? He? Where is he? Where is he? He's around the corner. I can hear him. Like I can hear him. Barber. <laughs> <laughs> so, Ryan Perry, leaving pit lane. Here we go. Well, here we go. So, this is, this is how the day is playing out. Of course, they are in a championship, and they're heading, of course, towards a championship in about three or four months' time. Ryan Parry, this is the update currently. He's got 66 points. 66 for Daniel Edwards, Adam Whitehead, and of course, where that comes from is where they're currently placed and from their qualifying scores. So as they get certain amounts of qualifying, depending on where they are, Matthew Brown, he got knocked out, but he got a really good qualifying score. So of course, it's going to park him in about the mid-range, but he's got some work to do. Yeah, he does. Yeah, and some work on the car to do as well. Does Matthew Brown. That's well, okay. Russell, Russell will do that. Yeah, yeah. So Dana will let him take some time off the actual business to do stuff on his own car. That white thing in the middle there. I think that might be 
one of those West cars. So Ryan Perry there, RB Powered S14 out of Rotorua. And Topo absolutely putting on the weather. Nice and green around as well. I mean, we're into December now, aren't we? And uh, yeah, the brown grass isn't really showing through. It's still nice and green around. That's what happens when you employ somebody that used to work on a, uh, on a golf course. Kesuke Nagashima there in the SR20. Powered 86 makes his way out as well. All right, who's going to win the round? Is it going to be Daniel Edwards? Will it be Ryan Perry? Is it going to be Adam Whitehead or Kesuke Nagashima? This is how they've got there. This is where they're heading to. Adam Whitehead. So, of course, we had the uh, started with the Link ECU Top 16 before moving into the Mimico Top 8. Thanks to Rex and the team from Mimico and Matamata. Allied Petroleum Top 4, and it will be the Repco Final. Who's it going to be? Moving in. Who is going to... Who do you think? Well, Kesuke Nagashima, I agree. Kesuke, Kesuke is driving very well. Uh, Daniel Edwards, he's sort of, um, he's been driving quite solid actually, like nothing outstanding, but he's doing a great job. It's just solid driving from Daniel Edwards. I remember um, Kenny Ruddle, when we commentated together, he said to me, Steve, we're not allowed to take favourites. So, Kesuke Nagashima is my favourite. Don't tell me anything, <laughs> can you? <laughs> so they're that Ryan Perry. So we're going to go right hand side of the tree. Are we? Oh, so Adam Whitehead, of course, he had to. He was one of the last guys to go through the battle. So we're moving over to the right hand side of the tree to start with for the battle between Ryan Perry and Kesuke Nagashima. So Ryan Perry, after qualifying in seventh against Kesuke in eleventh, means Ryan Perry will lead them out. Ryan Perry, how did he get there? He started with a battle against Daniel Caldwell. He then went up against Ryan Perry and took the win. Took it over Daniel Smith. He's had a great day to start with. Can he continue? We've got Kesuke Nagashima in the chase position. Ryan Perry in lead. Who is going to take the first spot in the final as they head down into the first turn? This is round one of the Repco D1NZ Pro Sport Championship. And we head down to the center section of the lap. That's a big solid line all oh, running over the ripple strip. That is one wheel off, Tony. Yeah, so Keske has got himself all the way down the inside part of the Dale ITM and running too far over those ripple strips. But look at the proximity from Keske. He knows that he needs to do some work to catch up to Ryan Perry, who's probably going to take an advantage into the first half of this battle as they come through to finish off. Here we go, trying to put one foot on the podium at least, whether they Keske choose this. Keske yeah. thought it was a race to start finish line. If that's the case, <laughs> he definitely won that. And some great shots, as per usual, coming from George and the team at Spy U Media. And a Whitehead in the background making his way out. Daniel, Daniel Edwards, Edwards following. So there is Keske Nagashima. Will be marked down. But yeah, like you say, Steve, it was only one wheel off. So um, yeah, Ryan Perry, on the initiation, he was uh, going around and he went outside that white line beautifully, which set him up for the rest of the run. Now, if you three wheel it, and nothing touches the actual ripple strip. Can't be wheel off, eh? Let's say, what line? He three wheeled it. Well, Ryan Perry's from Rotorua, and uh, being a, a Rotorua local, I'm, I'm a little bit on his side as well. So let's make it me versus you. You want Keske, I'll take Ryan. Only because he's got an advantage as well. Yeah, no, that's, that's a <laughs> stitcher. <laughs> but uh, hey, I'm, a, I'm always keen. I would have said I'm a gambling man, but I've never actually gambled in my life. You? No, no, I haven't haven't ever taken the dabble in a bit of gambling, actually. Something I should um, give a go in the future, maybe. Is it fun? Well, you don't know either. Oh, I've always wanted to go. There's a place in Omaha that I've always enjoyed, and I, I hear that there's a place that you can go and gamble. There we go. Let's gamble on the uh, winner of this match right now. It's Kiske Nakashima going up against Ryan Parry. Ryan Parry in the chase position. 86 fighters on the door of Kiske's AE86. And now this is one thing. Check out the speed of Kiske Nakashima. Yeah, so that little SR is doing what SRs do. And just burns off the RB. Ryan Parry there trying to close the gap up as they come down through the bottom of the Dale ITM part of the section. As they come through to finish, it's Keske absolutely throwing around the little A86. Arcs off the turn, grabs the inside flip, motors through that final section. It is going to come down to that wheel off. How important was that wheel off that he did? And is that going to... I mean, I guess the judges will be looking at different things like mistakes. The judges, of course, have their own replay system. So what we'd normally have done in the past is they were showing what we're doing now. Then we'll show a replay. We take far too much time up and then... 
Yeah, we're trying to, I mean, glance back to it. Keske's proximity was much better on Ryan Perry for the most part of the run. He did do the wheel off. Is that only a minor but deduction Ryan being one Perry wheel? Ryan Perry is from Rotorua. That's where you're yeah. from. So he obviously is going to get a slight advantage for that. So, yeah, it's going to be a tough one. Is the, the lack of proximity from Ryan Perry versus the wheel off from Keske. Um, other than that, pretty clean runs from both those drivers as they make their way down to the pits. Stephen McIver, Keske on the right, Ryan Perry on the left. Who's going to be? I reckon it's... Yeah, boy! Oh, there it is. And smacks him out of the park, Keske Nagashima. He's a fighter. He's an 86 fighter. Wow, Ryan Perry will go through for a chance to still put a spot on the podium. Keske, third and fourth. Keske, yeah, look Keske. at that. Well, who is going to go up against Keske Nagashima in the final? Will it be... Adam Whitehead in the Plan B S14. Is it going to be Daniel Edwards in the 180? About to find out. So Adam Whitehead leads around the outside of those cones. They need to run. Daniel Edwards in the chase position. So we need to see him on the outside of that white line there, which Adam has actually done beautifully on initiation. He's gone too wide. No, he hasn't. He's held it together as they come down into the Dale IDM part of the section. Well, they come through. We're going to see the nose of that all might have been run a wheel over the ripple strip. That's OK. There's a dirt turbo there. Was that from the lead car or the chase car backed up to the final turn? Yeah, look like it may have come from Daniel Edwards. He's lost a lot of uh, drive off that as well. So therefore, the, the uh, gap between the leader and the finisher, uh, sorry, and the chaser, Certainly grew. No traction out there on the dirt. As they come through to finish, there's always traction on the dirt, especially if it's Terracotta at Bay Park Speedway. Well, we'll ride on board with these two drivers as they head back into the pits. Which direction will it be? Is it going to be? No, they've got a second half of their battle. I'm an idiot. OK, Facebook, you don't have to agree. <laughs> oh, really yeah. loving fiends. Right, looking back to the live stream, we've got something from the Cook Islands. It's like it looks like a Cook oh. Islands flag, isn't it? Have I got hope about that right? Anua Witchman, good to see you streaming in to the Repco D1NZ National Drifting Championship live stream, courtesy of the D1NZ Facebook page. Right now, we're clicking across to Sky TV live at 2 p.m. Foxtel and Motorsport.tv. So there is the beautiful Mount Toe Hutter in the background. And the crisscross pattern. Tom, Tom Hodgson done a wonderful job along with the rest of the crew here. Topo International Motorsport Park looking absolutely fantastic for round one. Seeing half fantastic, the battle. Uh, fantastic in the background, fantastic on the track. Immaculately presented drift cars. The best thing about the starting, the opening round of the 2023 four season. The judges are ready, Launchmaster Willie's ready, and it's time to let these cars loose here at Topo. It is their second run. Run number two of the battle that is going to see somebody take a step into the finals. Tony G, lead us through. So Daniel Edwards now leading out. He's got a good line on the initiation. He's going to get and really fill out that outer zone on the number, sorry, first outer zone. And they As come they, through. Well, they come through to switch, and the... Oh, look at the power. And they're absolutely caught in a smoke show. So proximity from Adam Whitehead looking really good. He falls behind the B pillar a little bit. And there's a little bit of a bobble as he goes through. A little bit of a correction. But is that going to be enough for him with the drop? I mean, is that going to be enough of a deduc deduction when we saw Daniel, or what I thought was Daniel Edwards' rear tyres go off in the centre part of his chase? Some nice tight battles to finish off the Pro Sport Championship round number one. Of a five round season, of course, we're heading down to Nelson next. I'm really looking forward to heading to Nelson. Kohatu Park. I just love the South Island. Nelson's a great place of, uh, as well. What have we got result wise? Ah, oh, man. JDM Racing, look at that. Great chance heading out of the pits if you want to grab yourselves some merchandise if you are here live. But, man, just jump on their websites, they're all selling it. Absolutely. All, and there's social pages. Do people even have websites these days? I know we do with both the D1NZ.com. The sad for every voiceover. So who's going to go through the final? Adam Whitehead, Daniel Edwards. What do you think? Adam Whitehead. Uh, I'm going to go Daniel Edwards. I, I see you. Sorry, Adam Whitehead. It was, yeah, Daniel Edwards. I'll go Daniel Edwards. Maybe. Had the... Uh, this 
mistake through the centre part of the section. Judges are deliberating. We don't want to see those three letters OMT. Yep, and McIver, he agrees as well. Stephen, he's saying absolutely no more one more times. One more judge to come. And the, here comes the result. Left Adam Whitehead, right for Daniel Edwards. So it's going to go to the left hand side. Adam Whitehead takes the win. Joel Counter, he's gone one more time. But JT Fadido and Andrew Redwood, they. So, words just coming through that the third and fourth battle, because we are time certain, the battle between Dan and Ryan Parry will not be run. So it's going to go back to qualifying results for that. So Daniel Edwards, he qualified in eighth and Ryan Parry qualified in seventh. So, by my calculation, that means... Ah, there we go. So the, the Link ECU top 16... We started with, we go down to the Mimico top eight, the Allied Petroleum top four, we just saw complete there, and we're down to the Repco final. Keske Nagashima will be up against Adam Whitehead. So, yeah, we're, we're uh, looking at bypassing top, because we're time certain, Steve. Yeah, of course. We're bypassing the, uh, the top three battles. We're gonna go back to reverting to qualifying order. So Ryan Perry, after qualifying at seventh, over Daniel Edwards, who qualified eighth, will take All third right, place. So let's kind of explain what's happened here. Is uh, of course we have broadcast commitments with our broadcast partners with Sky Sport. So essentially, what has to happen is the uh, we're going to have to go through and look at time-wise. So we have to essentially look at the battle for third and fourth. We are going to look at the qualifying order to work out who is going to win the um, the third place and then after that of course we're going to see a battle for first and second and then that's that's part of the rules and regulations these drivers know that they're not it's not a surprise to them that this is happening no so um, of course in our um, in our rulings with the D1NZ we've got a rule book that goes through and in the rulings we have got the ability to go through to that so pro sport third and fourth and if you look at other championships around the world, such as Formula Drift, um, those guys there, they actually don't yeah. run a battle for third and fourth. Yeah, if you are a follower of Formula Drift in the States, uh, yeah, third and fourth battle just doesn't even happen. And they revert to qualifying order for that one there as well. So Ryan Parry, after qualifying in seventh over Daniel Edwards, will take third place. Ryan Parry from Rotorua. Talking Great about, talking about uh, like Formula Drift. Good luck to Darren Kelly tonight at Paradise Valley Raceway. They've got... Of course, our, our good friends from Valvoline have got their uh, the charity meeting. Charity yeah. meeting. What's it going to mean for the championship, though? I guess we're going to have a look at the uh, championship leadership uh, leaders' placings at the moment. But of course, it's going to already create a mix-up. Here we go. So currently, we've got Adam Whitehead leading Kiske Nagashima. It's all going to come down. Whoever wins the battle will obviously go to the top. Daniel Edwards, that one isn't going to change. So Ryan Parry, Zach Zidem, Daniel Smith. And then uh, Curtis, Lily, Justin Patterson, Matthew Brown, and Matty J. Now, of course, Matthew Brown, he went out in, 16, um, in the top 16 battle. And because of his qualifying score, is basically sitting in ninth place because he qualified so well yesterday. So, shout out to all the teams from uh, both Napa Auto Parts and Repco. Starts with the parts, and it starts right here with round one. So, giving these guys a bit of time to uh, just adjust their cars if anything needs happening to the suspension or brakes or anything like that, and obviously changing tyres, getting those tyre pressures right. And there it is once again, the beautiful tow huddle. Look at his cloak. versus Kesuke Nagashima will be S14 versus A86. Are we going to see Kesuke go all the way in round number one? Of course we are. Absolutely. And a white head from the bay. The Sunny Hawks Bay, that is. Yeah, not the real bay. Not the real bay, Bay Plenty. See, that's the bad thing for those guys, that both of you and I are from the bay. 
the real bay. We're going to be fighting online over that one. I don't just say things to upset people. This one here can be the battle of the bay for me then if... Uh, oh, where's Keskazy from uh, but, Auckland? But if Adam Whitehead goes through, I'll let Hawke's Bay be the bay for the rest of um, today, the day. <laughs> <laughs> if if Keskazy comes through and smokes him, then for the rest of the day, it'll be, and possibly my life, the bay will be the one that starts with the bay and their name, the Bay of Plenty. <laughs> All right, well, this is the final. How did they get there? So we've got Keske Nagashima. He was 11th qualifier, went through a great battle between himself and Ben Vanderlinden. Then he went up against Aaron Hayab, um, Habib. Sorry. After that, he went up against Zach Zayden. And that took him through into a great battle between himself and Ryan Perry. Adam Whitehead, how did he get there? So Adam Whitehead, he qualified in fifth place, so we've got a, a buy straight to the top 16. He took Rody Knowles on in that one and took the win. Then the other MTF Cambridge Finance car of Justin Patterson took the win against him, put him up against Daniel Edwards, who was driving very solid as well, but he took the win against Daniel and Adam Whitehead into the final against Keske Nagashiba, where left meets right on the battle tree. Tony G, I've got a problem. What's that, mate? Blue Jay under the bonnet of Adam Whitehead's car. Yeah, so 2J versus SR20. I'm supposed to like 2Js. Well, you know, it's not that it's Adam's fault, but driving an RX-7 with a V8 in it last year, I just, you know, love Adam to bits. But when, it's, when it comes to driving, and oh, I'm still, I'm that just disappointed. <laughs> I'm not even mad. I'm just disappointed. All right, well, let's go up and get some heat in those rear tyres. We'll scrub them up. This is the final of round one of the Repco Z1NZ Pro Sport Championship here, Topo International Motorsport Park. So it's a higher qualifier, of course, Adam Whitehead will go into lead position from Kiske Nagashima. Adam qualifying yesterday in fifth position. Talk about having some work to do, Kiske 11th. Keske there getting some warmth into the back tyres of that A86, 86 fighters. Oh, I'm looking forward to the day that uh, George from Inspire You just decides to land his drone in the cockpit of one of these cars. <laughs> now who did he do that with? You get one heck of a flight. or Mad Mike or somebody? Did he like fly through the window or something, yeah. did he? he said, go on, can you land it? He said, of course I can. Well, let's see what happens. This is the final. This is round one. This is the Repco D1NZ, the Pro Sport Championship. The final is about to begin. The high qualifier in the plan B S14 is Adam Whitehead. He will lead out for the first time today as he gets straight into action. It's an inside clip coming out to the outside zone, setting the car up as he goes, fires it through into the centre of the track. So Adam Whitehead, big smoke show as well. Keske showing the good proximity that he has for the majority of the day as well. There's a bird flies through in the front of Adam Whitehead. He's certainly not going to put him off as he throws it into the final corner of the drift section. Adam Whitehead running really wide, brings the nose back down. Keske doing the same thing as they close the gap up, they cross the line. That's what a final looks like. Great drive from both those drivers. It is the Pro Sport final number one, round number one here at Topol International Motorsport Park. They're putting it on. The track is certainly heating up and looking forward to the second half of this battle. As we see these two drivers head back down the back straight here at Topol. The track at the heart of the North Island of New Zealand. It's also the home of the historic Grand Prix, which will be mid-January in 2024. And not at the only biggest event that's happening, one even bigger come April next year as well. We see from across the ditch, the West Island of New Zealand, the Australian supercars, they will head over here to a round. I'm looking extremely forward to watching those Camaras and Mustangs head around this racetrack. Yeah, certainly a lot of action happens on this track here in Topol. What an amazing job the entire team here does from the track itself and from the different series. So Keske Nagashima, he will lead out. Geez, I'd ha I, I can't even put a, uh, a penny between them at the moment, Steve. Good advantage going. It's gonna, you're you're going to say Keske no matter what, aren't you? He's no my bro. He's my bro. What about Actually, the 2JZ? So yeah. See? 
All right, well, we're going to go down to the hands of Launchmaster Willie. Who do you think he is going to go for? Oh, it's pretty to watch here. Eight, six fighters on the door of Kesuke Nagashima's AE86. The man from Japan. This is the final. Will this be the final run as Kesuke straight into action and straight into the door goes Adam Whitehead. What is going on? Kesuke says, I don't care. Let's just go drifting. I've got a build to fix. So, yeah, it looked like Adam Whitehead was the one that put the, uh, the front wheel into the side of Keske that could be deemed I mean sure well look at the smoke show that Keske is now putting on he's amped he's in there he's having fun wow so uh wow congratulations from the Hawks Bay is Adam Whitehead so pretty the man yeah. who leads him out back onto the track is Keske Nagashima we'll go down into the pits and we will find out I guess will we find out at prize giving Let's go straight down to prize giving right now. We will go up and catch up with his lordship, Mr. Stephen McIver, down in the pits shortly. So for International Motorsport Park, round one of the Repco D1 NZ National Drifting Championship. Okay, he's saying, get your helmets off, get out of the cars. <laughs> All right, who's it going to be? Come on, race control. Just spit it out so we can send it down to Stephen McIver. Look at Keske. He's got his shades on. He's got his hair slicked back. Let's go down to Stephen McIver. Wow, how much fun was that? All right, lads. Come over here. Sugi, here you go. Adam. Right, boys. This is the moment, right? One or two. Doesn't matter. It's been a great start to the weekend. While we're waiting for that result, Kasugi, fantastic weekend so far, huh? No, it's been absolutely phenomenal. Um, the car's been on, talk performance, you know, Infinity Auto Works, and everyone that sponsored me to, to come to this day is just absolutely unreal. I'm speechless. Not bad for a little old car, hey? It's not bad at all, mate. Little little 86 does well. Up against the big old S40, the big donkey there. Well played, mate. Uh, don't know what the result is, but congratulations on a good weekend to this point. Oh, it's been an unreal weekend, yeah. All the, all the drivers have just stepped it up another level. Kesuke was on, I had to put it on his door, but I don't know we'll see the result, but big thank you to Plan B, Hydraulics, Pro Blast, RPM Fabrication, Fertech New Zealand, and um, yeah, it's been an awesome weekend. Okay, lads, buy your cars there, one by there, but Ford, let's get this right. Okay, someone talk to me on my ear, please. And your winner of D1NZ, Repco D1NZ Pro Sport, round number one, Kesuke Nakajima! <laughs> All righty, boys, let's not, let's not muck around. Get up and get ready for the podium. We're going to do this podium straight away. Lance Hayski and Keith Lewis from D1NZ are going to present the prizes. So in second position, Adam White in the Plan B S14. And your champion for round number one, Kesuke Nagashima, little Toyota 86. There is your podium, boys. The bottles are open. Spray some champagne. And that is how Ripco D1NZ Pro Sport opens the 2023-2024 season. Wow. Remember, it's in the rules. We didn't have to run three and four, so those guys will figure that one a little bit later. But there is your champion, Kesuke Nagashima. All right, folks, let's get busy, because not too far away. Two o'clock, Sky Sport, KO, Fox Sport, Motorsport.tv. The pros are coming to play. The Ripco D1NZ Smoke Show is coming live in 30 minutes.